ABC Sports College Football presents the first ACC matchup for both teams as the Maryland Terrapins come to town to take on number six, Florida State. And hey everybody, I'm Terry again, and when you win against a ranked opponent on the road, you expect to make a move in the polls. Well, that's what Florida State did last week with a 14-7 win over Southern California out of the Coliseum, but they moved down from number five to number six. Bobby Bowden was pleased with the win. He was more than pleased with his defensive effort, but when you walk around Tallahassee this week, all you hear are complaints and concerns about the offense, and uh, I bring in my partner, Tim Branson. You think they're 0-1, not 1-0 at this point, the way people are talking, but there are question marks about the offense and uh, how serious do you think they are? I don't think the the uh, problems or the questions are very serious. It's all wrapped up in youth. We're talking about freshmen and sophomores laced in the roster and they always make mistakes. Well, talking about new and talking about young, we have a first-time head coach on the Maryland sideline, although he helped rebuild programs at Colorado and Northwestern. Ron Vanderlinden takes over. Our Lewis Johnson is with him right now down on the sidelines. Lewis? All right, Terry, thanks so much. Coach, after the disappointing loss to Ohio, what have you done to shore up the self-esteem of this team as they get ready to prepare uh, to meet Florida State today? Well, this is a journey, and, and uh, we're not so much as playing for a championship, but to develop a championship program, this is the first step. I have never played Florida State. They have what we want, and so I'm anxious to match up against them today and uh, see where we need to get to go to take this thing over. In a nutshell, what are your real expectations, long-term expectations for Maryland football? Well, I think we have every right to expect Maryland football to compete on an annual basis for the ACC championship. It is blazing here today. Today the temperature is supposed to be about 75 in Maryland. It's already about 120 here. How are you guys going to manage the heat? Well, uh, we're just going to get after it. We're going to roll a lot of guys through. Uh, we've got, we've worked hard all week to uh, hydrate, and so hopefully we'll be able to play hard for 60 minutes. Now about the uh, your quarterback, Brian Cummings. He has uh, been volatile in the past. Uh, what have you done to calm him down? What do you expect today? Well, Brian has done a great job of learning our system. I expect him to uh, methodically uh, play very business-like today, play within himself, and I think Brian will do just fine. Coach, thanks so much, and good Thank luck you. today. Thank you. Terry? All right, Lewis, it is a young ball club, and uh, Ron is 0-1 uh, after the loss to Ohio, but a lot of enthusiasm on the campus in College Park today, though, it's a major test, uh, namely because of the defense of Florida State, Timmy. I don't think there's any question about it. The defense is what wins titles, and certainly Florida State has that. And you have to start with the defensive end. I mean, they've got a defensive end that is as good as anybody. Of course, you've got the senior leadership as well with Thad Busby giving the Seminole stability. He'll, he'll be 11-1 as a starter coming into this ballgame, and although it seems that he's always taking heat for inconsistencies, folks, he is solid. And then on defense, of course, Andre Wadsworth. He is the big guy that everybody's watching, 6'5", 275 pounds. He is strong. He is quick. He is fun to watch. Then you've got Sam Coward. He is back this year. Set out last year rehabbing his knee. He's a Butkus Award candidate. Had 18 tackles last week against Southern California. Keep in mind, Southern California, known as Tailback U, able to gain just 25 yards rushing against the Seminoles of Florida State. Outstanding defensive unit. Florida State is young, but talented, and very, very heavily favored today over Maryland. Did you ever think you'd see a Southern Cal offense only gain 25 yards on the ground? Tailback U, all the great running backs, but uh, this is a special defense for Florida State. And, you know, we head into the first ACC game for both of these clubs, and this is a league that has taken some shots in the past, but I'll tell you what, it is more balanced than ever now, and there have been some big wins out of conference by ACC teams already. Give a lot of that credit to Florida State. They brought the rest of the conference up to their level. They're not there yet, but they certainly are making progress. You saw that in NC State going up and winning in the Dome up there at Syracuse. That was a big upset. Then Wake Forest beating Northwestern. Florida State, of course, over USC last week. Everybody says, well, you're going out and you're playing a, a team out in Southern California. You should win that. But they were ranked 21st in the country. Very talented team. ACC's playing outstanding football right now. And in conference today, NC State, uh, a loser. Last second field goal by Clemson and Florida State. Bobby Bowden, they go to Clemson next week, and that should be a heck of a ball game. Uh, the Tigers with a much better offense this year. Bobby Bowden in his 22nd year as the head coach of Florida State. More enthusiasm than ever. We talked to him this week and he said it's a little bit scary but uh, he's got a young team and that makes it fun a lot of a lot of new things happening here in Tallahassee well, makes him a teacher again. and there's Ron Vanderlin who also is a very young coach if we're talking about youth but this is a guy that helped rebuild programs at both Colorado at Northwestern came into Maryland into College Park with a lot of enthusiasm and right away set the standard says eventually he wants to win the Atlantic Coast Conference championship and he wants that to lead to a national title
And as Brad Rhodes gets set to kick off for Maryland, let's go briefly down to Lewis Johnson on the sidelines. Lewis. Terry, thanks. It is amazing how hot it is down here on the field. I was out earlier just checking the temperature. Now it's at 120. And you see these white mats that the players are standing on on the sidelines. It's actually 5 to 7 degrees warmer than it is on the grass. So it's just flat out hot. Guys? All right, Lewis. Brad Rhodes, a junior out of Biloxi, Mississippi. Maryland won the toss. They deferred in the second half. So back deep for Florida State, Jermaine Stringer is back there, along with Benez Gooch, number 20. And we are set to get underway here in Tallahassee. The home opener for the Seminoles in the first ACC matchup for both of these clubs. Florida State. 1-0, Maryland 0-1. And we're underway here in Tallahassee. It's Stringer, five yards deep. He's going to bring it back out. Cuts back, has some room, turns the corner. Across the 20 and knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Nice cut back on the opening kickoff. And the tackle made by the kicker, Brad Rhodes. And right out of the gate to me, you're going to look at some of the speed that Florida State has. We can talk about youth, we can talk about inexperience, but there's always speed here and they're always deep. And it's going to be that speed that I suspect we'll see fairly early. They may run a few plays, but they're also going to test Maryland's rebuilt secondary and they're going to do it early. This is a totally rebuilt secondary of the University of Maryland. They lost all four of their starters and I guarantee Florida State will go after it early. On first down, that must be the quarterback back in the shotgun. Three receivers set. Keith Feaster, the man taking over for Warwick Dunn in the backfield. Warwick in motion. It's Feaster out of the backfield. At the 25 and up to the 29-yard line. The hit made by Henry Baker, the strong safety, getting a start ahead of Paul Jackson, who is normally the starter back there. Very nice play by Baker as well. Told you they were going to throw, and they were going to throw early. Test this secondary, so you go right after Baker. Watch Baker now. He breaks down. It's one-on-one. Doesn't commit one way or the other. Hits him high. Short tackle. Nicely done. Again, the Seminoles coming up in the shotgun center. Kevin Long, really the only experienced man on that line. He makes the calls in terms of blocking speed. This one's complete to Lavernius Cole. Up to the 49-yard line, and this offense may have taken some hits last week, but uh, they got a kick started right now. A gain of 19 for Cole. And they're not going to waste any time. They're going without a huddle. They caught Maryland in the zone here. Watch Maryland sitting back in a very passive zone, and they don't get any pressure. So Busby just steps up, drills it in the seam. There's no question that Washington, number 12, has no shot sitting in the zone to come up and make that play early. So first and 10 early on here in the game. Busby flushed out of the pocket. He has room to run if he wants to. And he's got another Florida State first down at the 40-yard line of Maryland. Johnny Hicks, the defensive tackle from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, made the stop along with Wendy Washington. Right now, Florida State making it look easy. Coming out with the early passes just seemed to open the field up for Busby to run. He got a little heat, but there was nobody on the perimeter to keep him in. And you think about that heat, well over 100 degrees on the field, the no huddle. The defense of Maryland on the field is going to be tough to stay in it all day long. Brandon moved the, the tackle for Florida State, so that'll take him back. First penalty of the game for Florida State. <laughs> Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee where the Florida State Seminoles have not been beaten since 1991. We are already underway early on in the first ACC matchup between these two schools. 13-44 left here in the first period. Terry Gannon along with Tim Brandt and Lewis Johnson down on the field. And Florida State took the opening kickoff. They've gone to the no-huddle offense. Busby here to throw. Flushed out and brought down at the 46-yard line of the Maryland Terrapins. Of course, Florida State with a win last week over Southern California. Let's take a look right now at the Chile starting lineups for both schools. The offensive line for Florida State. Four new players really there. Trey Thomas, the tackle, suspended for one game, so Jerry Carmichael gets a start today. The wide receivers are good. They're experienced, very deep there. E.G. Green led them in receptions the last two years. Of course, Dee Feaster, the man taking over for Warwick, done this year at tailback. 
Florida State had not run the ball yet other than a scramble by Busby. Everything's been pass-oriented. And Busby to throw the Phillies forward, wide open and inside the 30-yard line down to the 27. And another first down for the Seminole. Wendy Washington made the stop. But a game of 18, you look at the Maryland defensive line, Rasheed Simmons getting a start for an injured Eric Hicks. Kendall Ogle and Eric Barton, very good linebackers. Maybe uh, the strength of the Maryland defense here, but you look at the secondary, they're all new players this year in terms of starters, and Troy Davidson played wide receiver a year ago. Lost all four of them, including Chad Scott, who now plays with the Steelers. The game plan for Florida State coming in was to test that secondary, and they've thrown or tried to every play. Here's the tight end, Melvin Pearsall. They get him in the mix for the first time today, and he's close to another Seminole first down. Boy, a lot of these pass plays, too, are targeted to the right side, going against Lindy Washington, the little sophomore from Upper Barnborough, Maryland. He's from Nevada High School, but they're going in his direction a lot. Yeah, and you expect to see the secondary tested often, and that's exactly what Florida State's doing early on. Not only with a shotgun, but the no huddle offense. It is close to 120 degrees down on the field. The official temperature, about 97. Busby from the shotgun over the middle to the tailback. And he is close to another first down, maybe just about a yard shy of that. I don't think anybody is surprised by this. I mean, the game coming in, you looked at it and said Florida State's a huge, huge favorite over Maryland. And yet Maryland needed some early success to build some confidence. This is a young team, brand new coach, new system. And they aren't getting any of that. As a matter of fact, Florida State's making a pay for the heat and for the new rebuilt secondary. Memphis lost a week ago to Ohio. Ram Tanderlin, the new head coach. Complete inside the five-yard line, maybe down to the three. Melvin Pearsall again, the receiver. And that is something Florida State's really looking to do this year, too. Melvin Pearsall, a senior of Lake Wales, Florida. Henry Baker made the tackle in the secondary. But uh, he caught three passes a week ago against USC in the... Uh, that's a lot more looks than uh, we've seen in the past. Terry, the Maryland coaches feel that they aren't talented enough yet to play much man defense, so they mix it up with a lot of zone movement, trying to do it with mirrors. They play sound and aggressively, but right now, because they sat in that zone, Florida State moved right down. They have to be more aggressive, or this could get ugly early. Long drive to open up the ball game for Florida State. Up to the corner of the end zone, E.G. Green, but he was overthrown by Busby. Pretty good coverage from Troy Davidson. Well, I tell you what, that was good coverage, and Green is as good as they, as they get. Two-time All-ACC guy, needs just 93 yards to go over the 2,000 career yard mark, and just one catch to keep his streak alive. 28 straight games now with a catch. And uh, quarterback Thad Busby used to pressure, used to being pressed, got a lot of bad press this week for his performance against USC. Opens up six for seven, 64 yards in the opening drive. There goes Feaster. Up running over the left side. Now that was impressive. Maryland got there in a hurry. Eric Barton, the middle linebacker, who they say can develop into an NFL type linebacker, he got there and put a pretty good stick on him. Now Barton, one of the players that coaches uh, came in for the first time this year and said, We're really surprised about him. Look at Barton coming up in the hole. Got there quickly, skated down the line, read the play, played it inside out, and made the hit. The lead up to and Dean Feaster out of the eye. Busby, straight drop to throw to the corner. Jump right through the hands of the intended receiver. E.G. Green, you don't see that happen very often to him. Now, see, and you know who's going to take the heat for that is Busby because they're going to say it was a little bit high. But that ball, as you mentioned, should have been caught. It went right through Busby's hands. He got some leverage. Watch the separation. He drives him off. Now watch. Boom. Kick back to the outside. He's open. Lay it over his shoulder. But instead, puts it high. was a little bit high, but Green still could have gotten to it. So it brings up fourth down, and uh, Maryland's defense, they've got to be thrilled with what they've done. Bill Grammatica in with a field goal try of 20 yards, and he splits the upright. So Florida State on the board early. An impressive drive. They took it all the way down the field, but nice stop near the goal line by the Maryland defense. It's 3 nothing. Florida State up early by a field goal on their opening drive of the ball game. They did it quickly. They said coming in that they were going to test the Maryland secondary, which was totally rebuilt. They thought they could have success there, and obviously they did. Now, out of the 12 plays that Florida State ran, they went 70 yards in just over four minutes. But eight of the 12 plays were passes, and they only had three huddles, and that's when they got down into the goal line offense. The reason they did that was so Maryland couldn't substitute, utilizing the heat. 
very hot down here. Maryland's not used to it. Wanted to get a lot of people in the game, and by going no huddle, Maryland couldn't substitute. So Florida State set to kick off. That's Sebastian Janikowski, a freshman out of Daytona Beach, but originally from Poland. He came here to live with his father. And Bobby Bowden says he has the strongest leg that he has ever seen on a college kicker. We saw him kicking 57 yarders at practice the other day. Came out here, we saw him kick over 60 yards. Back deep for the Terrapins in the middle of the field, Tony Jackson. A freshman out of Ellicott City, Maryland, and Lewis Sanders, the sophomore out of Staten Island. Squid kick taken up near the 20-yard line. And a good haul and a good run back up to the 37-yard line by Buddy Rogers, a starting tailback. Maryland, good field position on their opening drive. We'll take a break. clouds here in Tallahassee and uh, those out in the stands hope that they cool things off a little bit. 97 degrees at kickoff time. I have to wonder why Florida State went to a squib kick giving Maryland excellent field position to start this drive. They started the 37. But Rogers is starting tailback. Nowhere to go. Wrapped up in the backfield by a host of Florida State tacklers including Bobby Rose getting a start over an injured Darrell Bush today. And the Chili starting lineups the offensive line for Maryland. This may be their strength on offense. Some experience there. Darrell Gilliam a big offensive tackler and a three year starter. Moses Cruz a guy who caught a 35 yard touchdown pass last week against uh, Ohio and in the backfield Timmons the H-back not really a fullback Buddy Rogers a slim down version he lost about 20 pounds in the offseason and Brian Cummings a fifth year senior back to Rogers up for a while then slammed to the turf at the 36 yard line Buddy Rhodes again in on the stop and that Florida State defense is uh, going to be something to watch all year long. Andre Wadsworth maybe the best defensive end in the country. And the linebacking core, very good. But Sam Coward back after the knee surgery last year. Bobby Rhodes getting the start for Daryl Bush, as we mentioned, who's out with a sprained ankle. And a good secondary, a lot of speed with Roll and Saunders at the corners. Florida State expected Maryland to run early. They have. They loaded up. And now Maryland faced with a third and forever. Cummings on the roll, has time. Throws, almost picked off by Roll. Samari Roll had it, couldn't hold on. And not a very good start for Brian Cummings. No, and the Maryland Terrapins can't afford this three and out. They only sent one receiver out. They made it look like it was going to be another run. They faked a draw look and came out with this one pass, and it was almost intercepted. Maryland can't afford to have three and out all day. They've got to shorten the game and move the chains. Russell Edwards, a junior out of Alexandria, Virginia, on for his first punt. Peter Warren watches this one take a Maryland bounce and go out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and that's where Florida State will take over for the second series of the afternoon. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics, people who know, use Valvoline. And National Car Rental. So, what are you waiting for? Let's go. 3 0, Florida State up. There was a penalty on the punt by Russell Edwards, an illegal formation against the Terrapin, so they will back it up and do it all over again. Maryland had only three penalties all last week against Ohio. Everything going wrong for the Terps right now. Peter Warwick back deep. He ran one back 78 yards, but it was called back for flipping last week against USC. Changes direction still up. Now brought down by Eric Barton at the 40-yard line. And let's go down to Lewis on the sidelines. 
Terry, thanks. You talked about the temperature down here today, 97 degrees listed, but let me tell you, it's much warmer than that down here on the field. It's been fluctuating wildly. Right now, I've got about 100. It's been up to 119, but we're all loving this big cloud that's passing over the stadium at the moment. Players have their cool zones and all that stuff happening to uh, help them maintain through the heat. And uh, these white carpets that the players are standing on on each sideline raise the temperature at least five to seven degrees. It is hot. Terry? Well, Ron Vanderlinden is hot right now because he had the penalty illegal formation and another flag on the last punt, Timmy. This one has declined, but it's the second penalty in two plays for Maryland. We said they had only three all last week. You know, that penalty, too, the one that was accepted, where Maryland had to re-punt, cost them 20 yards. Instead of being on the 20, after that punt, they're out to the 40-yard line. Shotgun formation again for Thad Busby and the Knowles. Damian Harrell, a senior out of Miami, is in there at the wideout spot now. Three receivers set on first down from the 40. Busby to throw, wide open is Warwick, a little bit behind him, and he drops it. Yeah, but again, it was in his hands. He dropped it, and Busby will take the heat for the incompletion. Ball may have been tipped that time, Timmy. Ball should have still been caught. Lindy Washington, a young cornerback on the coverage. Busby, good day so far. Six for nine for 64 yards. Six for nine, and we say he's got two drops. Yep. And, you know, a week ago, with all the questions concerning Thad Busby, he did take them on a 97-yard drive to win the game at the Coliseum. Wide open over the middle. He's got a receiver inside the 30. Green inside the 5 and knocked out of bounds. E.G. Green. No problem there. 59 yards on the play from Busby to Green. Coming out of the right hand of your screen, Busby had him all the way, looking at him, never never looked off. They were in a soft zone again, and as long as Maryland sits in that zone, Florida State will run right by him. This was just a super effort to take him out, but that keeps the streak alive. He now has made a catch in 29 straight games. He needs one more to catch Dawsey and Ron Sellers. And there's been no pressure at all on Thad Busby so far. Busby straight ahead, trying to sneak it in. Stop just shy of the goal line. Well, A.G. Green coming into the game, 93 yards shy of 2,000 yards, but uh, when you look at the record that he is trying to catch, Dossie and Sellers hold that, but you've got to get some pressure on. Right now, Merlin rushing three guys and not getting anywhere close to Busby. No, outstanding game plan by the Florida State coaches. They're coming in and they're running three wide receivers out wide. What they're doing is spreading Maryland's defense thin. Maryland's sitting in a zone. It leaves a whole lot of open space for them to throw and find receivers. Myron Jackson now back up tight end in the ball game. The other thing is Maryland looks like they're wearing cement galoshes while Florida State looks like they have wings. And Dula and Keister in the backfield. Keister just waltzes into the end zone. Untouched. How easy was that? Seal the corner, beat the perimeter, and score the touchdown. Bingo. Well, Dean Feaster, a week ago, had a couple of fumbles. He lost one of them against the Trojans. Much better start this week, and a better start for Florida State. Gramatica on for the extra point. Up, and it is good. Hard to find much wrong with what the Seminoles have done so far here in their home opener. They lead 10 to nothing. The Florida State offense on fire so far. Two possessions, two scores. Florida State's not doing anything special. It looks as if Maryland's just running themselves out of plays. Watch this. Here's Hicks. Here's your strong safety. That's Jackson. He's going to come in, take the inside route, see him here. They're just going to go like this and seal him and get outside. Go ahead and roll it. Watch Maryland run themselves right out of the play. There's nobody out on the perimeter. There's absolutely no containment. I mean, that's a cakewalk. Anyway, you could have scored that, Terry. Don't go that far. 10-0, though. Four plays, 60 yards, and uh, over 50 of those in the air to E.G. Green. Ron Vanderlinden, welcome to the head coaching ranks. His first head coaching job, of course, he helped rebuild Colorado and Northwestern as a defensive coordinator. Ron Vanderlinden is one heck of a coach, and he's going to turn this program around. He's young, he's aggressive, he's sound. Right now, he doesn't have the athletes. Tony Jackson back deep, keeps moving back. And then Bruce James as well watches it sail out of the end zone they'll bring it out to the 20. Janikowski has a leg 
Well, Monday night, live at 9 o'clock Eastern, ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Eagles taking on the Cowboys. Last time they met last November in Dallas, the Eagles won. Of course, Philadelphia coming off the upset of Green Bay as well. Good matchup. Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern time on Monday Night Football. Cowboys losing to Arizona in overtime last week. Chief Osceola on top Renegade. UCLA trying to win one. And that's a, uh, they've had a fallacious schedule. What a tough schedule. Matt Kalapinski, the H-back now, along with Brian Underwood in the backfield. Cummings under pressure, throws incomplete. Fortunately, it wasn't picked off. Andre Wadsworth was right in the face of Brian Cummings. See, Cummings is going to get a lot of that today against Florida State. This is a team with a lot of very young players, Maryland is, in critical positions. Last week, four freshmen made a total of 11 catches and a touchdown. And so you look at this and you say, well, we talked about the youth at Florida State, but here's the youth of Maryland and not nearly as quick. And there is a flag down on the field up at the 35-yard line. We'll sort it out. Ronald Cherry, the referee, and his crew. So holding against Bobby Bowden's defense. First penalty of the afternoon against the Noles. That's a holding by the defense. That's a 10 yard penalty and a first down. That's the most yards Maryland's made on a play today. Any way you can get it. Look at that. You think I'm being facetious? 135 yards for Florida State. Maryland still in the negative side. No, it's first down just short of the 30 yard line. Here come the Knowles with pressure. Underwood, nowhere to go. Dropped back at the 25-yard line. Sam Howard was there and let's, for the first time, go up to New York to check in with John Saunders. Started the season 0-2. Washington State, Tennessee, tough losses. Today against Texas, Cade McNown, five yards to Jim McElroy as UCLA gets on the board first, trying to avoid starting 0-3, 7-0. Terry, back to you. John, thank you. Bob Toledo, so far so good for him today. On the defense, that's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. You know, the crowd doesn't like it, but Underwood was on the ground and he got a hit and the flag came down immediately. Now watch Underwood will go down. He's down on the ground. Here comes the hit. That's when they threw the flag. That's Larry Smith, the defensive tackle. And no question about that. So Maryland moving the chain, not through the air on the ground, but through penalties by Florida State. The pitch out to Buddy Rock. He turns the corner, got a good gain across midfield. And to the 48 of Florida State, Rogers, the senior out of East Providence, Rhode Island, he dropped about 15 to 20 pounds in the offseason. And really, he said, look, I like to win more than I like to eat. I needed to drop that pound. Those good, little, good little play action here. They, they faked it up the middle, then they got it out the pitch to Rogers. They asked Rogers how he lost all that weight, what kind of diet program he was on. He just said, I just stayed out of Danny's. I didn't stop eating all that fried chicken and the tacos. Second leading rusher a year ago, right behind Ryan Underwood. Danny's restaurant right there in College Park. Cummings on the run. Looking. And almost picked off by Dexter Jackson. Cummings, I believe, was trying to throw that ball away. But Jackson was down there. And really, there was no receiver down there. Moses Cruz, the only man within 15 yards of that ball. I don't know why we're acting surprised, but Maryland looks so unsettled right now, making bad decisions. I mean, right now, Cummings is on the run, so he knows, all right, here's my receiver. He's covered. I'm going to run to the sidelines, try to buy some time. Still covered, so he throws it what appears to be away, but almost, look at this. That should have been picked off. Jackson had the ball and lost it when he hit the ground. Well, you wonder if Brian Cummings is having flashbacks. He uh, spent a lot of time on the ground in the last game last season against Florida State. He was sacked eight times, actually asked to come out of the ball game. Took himself out of the ball game at that point. And was knocked down about 19 times. So the coaches say, though, they really like what he's done in the offseason. They like his leadership. They like what he's done in terms of studying the offense, adapting to his third offense now in three years. And he was voted one of the captains by the players. Buddy Rogers, too much, Garnet and Gold. 
He lost a couple. Sam Cowart, the weak side linebacker, got him first. Cowart, of course, who was out all of last year. He had the reconstructed knee surgery that uh, he was injured in the Orange Bowl in 96 against Notre Dame. Fought his way back. Used to wear number 56, now wearing number one. He says, I want to be the number one player, the number one linebacker in the country. I want our team to be number one. That's why I'm wearing that number. Well, not only that, but he also said, I've made God number one in my life, and he's the guy that helped me get back to where I am. So there were a lot of reasons he changed jersey numbers. Third and 13, you don't want to be here if you're Maryland. Rogers not going to cut back. Howard in there again with Shevin Smith, the rover. That could be another reason he wears number one. He's the first one to the play all the time, and he's going to be a first-round draft pick. Now, you know, there's a little bit of competition in the linebacking core for Florida State between Sam Cowart and Daryl Bush as Ron Vanderlinden tries to figure some way to move the ball against the Seminoles. Right now, they are not doing anything. I mean, Cowart stepped right up, took the lead blocker. Now, watch his pursuit from the backside. He's the first one to make the hit. This is a very fast defense. Edwards spun off the side of his foot. There's a flag down again. We've had our share already. This one goes out of bounds outside the 30-yard line. Flag is back at the 48 of the Terps. Personal foul against Florida State. So you've got three penalties on this drive. Well, tonight on ESPN, Syracuse at Virginia Tech. Should be a good one in the Big East. Donovan McNabb, of course, leading the Syracuse Orangemen. And at uh, 9 o'clock Eastern, LSU, Mississippi State, the comeback team. Two fourth quarter comebacks for them so far. On the Deuce, Stanford taking on North Carolina in Chapel Hill. That'll be a great one, a non-conference showdown. And Utah, TCU, tonight on ESPN2. That penalty against Florida State. Gives Maryland a first down, I believe. On well, the defense in Florida State yeah. territory. So Maryland's offense now will come back on the field. You can see Florida State's had four penalties, 45 yards. This is a great break for Maryland. It's a third first down by a penalty on this drive for Ron Vanderlinden's squad. Purdue ahead of the Irish. Not Davey struggled a week ago against an ACC team, Georgia Tech, before coming from behind the win in South Bend. So first down again by penalty for the Terrapin. At the 40-yard line. Flags down again. Ryan Underwood looks the room, cuts back, gains about four. But we'll see what uh, the markers are all about. I think this one's going to be against Maryland, but Maryland now starting to rotate its backs. That time you had uh, Jordan in the game, and he's a young, true freshman out of Suitland, Maryland, quality player, but a little bit more speed. Ryan Underwood, the man who carried the ball, a fifth-year senior out of the Bronx. Well, that's a five-yard penalty against Vanderlinden's offense. Terry, we've seen Rodgers, we've seen Underwood. But the illegal shift on the offense, that's a five-yard penalty, will still have a first down. Jordan came in that time as a blocker. Boone will also play. He's another freshman who has good speed. And they're going to have to start rotating guys, get fresh legs, get a little more speed there on the corners. Also, Cummings, to beat that pressure from Florida State, I think he's going to have to go to the three-step drop quick release passes. Well, what Florida State can do with their speed is they can lock on the corners with the wideouts, take that away from them, and then the pressure comes up the middle. Cummings to Underwood. Head on at the 45-yard line. Guess who? Big number one, Sam Coward. Huh. That's a hello. Definitely a hello. Again, they're using quickness. Maryland trying to run this power offense, and right now they're not powering anybody. If you watch, here's the H-back right here. He's going to try to throw a block, and they're going to bring Underwood. But it's taken so long to develop. Watch the defense now get to this thing. They're coming from the corners. They're coming up from the secondary, and the linebackers are getting there in a hurry. Maryland can't afford to let plays develop and take that much time. Hard to block that man. Second and 15, Cummins pitches it out to Underwood. Got a good block, but he can't get outside. Swarmed under at the 48-yard line. Looked for a moment like he had some daylight, but it closes quickly. Terps are still in minus yardage. As a matter of fact, right now, they are 
They need seven just to get back to the first down spot. Lamont Green, the junior out of Miami. The outside linebacker made the stop. Number 45 is a great story. Now, the defensive player of the year is senior year in high school, national player of the year, and it's taken him four years to start here at Florida State. He's been patient. He was injured his freshman year here in Tallahassee, but making up for it now. Florida State plays eight men in the box. That's between tackles. And they walk up, they lock on you man-to-man. -man. Their cornerbacks can play man-to-man. -man. That allows the, the guys inside the tackles to be more aggressive. They outnumber you. They dare you to throw. And right now, Maryland's not throwing much. They're trying to run and challenge that eight-man front where they're more red jerseys than white. And that's, that's what happens. Tough to move anywhere when you're going in that direction. See number 19, Bruce James in at the wideout spot now for Maryland did not play a week ago because he missed some practice and that is one of the rules of the new head coach but he can fly Cummings gives straight ahead to the H back to the 44 yard line Matt Kalapinski on the carry paid for it though Ryan Allen a redshirt freshman out of Lake City Florida made the hit he got there Allen did 55 and stood him up but then Coward came through and really laid a lick on him you look at this linebacking core for Florida State Remember a year ago, they had guys like Crockett and Crawford, guys in the NFL, and they may be better this year. Daryl Bush not playing today because of a sprained ankle. And a little competition between Bush and Coward as to number of tackles in the Buckus Award. Warwick. Pretty good punt this time from Edwards. A little too good into the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 20. A 45-yard punt. He would have liked about a 35-yarder. Well, ABC's college football is online right now with live, real-time play-by-play displays from all of our games. All on America Online, keyword ABC Sports. There's Daryl Bush, better known as the president around here. He had nine tackles against Southern California last week. And as you mentioned, Coward had 18, and that's the story you told about. He doesn't want to sit out of this ball game because he wants to be the leading tackler. And he thinks if he sits out, which he's doing, he'll fall so far behind Coward, he'll never catch him, and I think that's what's going to happen. Well, the coaches don't really care about the Buckus Award, though. They want to win games down the line in November. And that's why he's sitting out today. Probably could have to be. Leslie on first down, Melvin Pearson, the tight end, a big game. Out to the 44-yard line. A gain of 23 as Busby goes to his senior tight end from Lake Wales, Florida. I want to tell you something. This is just a mismatch right now. You've got Melvin Pearsall at 6'1", 255 pounds. Go ahead and roll it because Pearsall is just going to slide out into the flats. Now watch. Here comes your defensive back who's 6 feet, 185 pounds. I mean, it is a mismatch. He hits him low. Always hit the guy high out in the flats because you're the only line of defense out there. Pearsall with three catches already and three a week ago against the Seattle last year. Dee Feaster with a catch over the middle. Another big game. And we go up to John Saunders in New York. John, what's going on? Terry, time now for the Burger King update. Notre Dame against Purdue. You know that the Fighting Irish struggled last week at home against Georgia Tech, struggling again. Dickin gets it down to the 27, sets up a touchdown. The Irish are down. All right, John here with that Busby on the run. Hooks up with E.G. Green, his favorite target, down to the 26-yard line, and they'll move the chains again. They're not taking their time either. There's no huddle shotgun offense just going right through the Terrapin defense. Yeah, this is becoming like a track meet right now. Busby thrown across his body and again into that zone. Now, Maryland didn't want to play man-to-man -man because they didn't think they had the talent to do that. But you cannot tell me that man-to-man -man defense right now could be any worse than what they're facing. They're playing a soft zone, leaving the field wide open. Florida State's just having its way. E.G. Green already 81 yards in the air. And here out of the backfield, and Pearsall is hit, but he's still up. Down to the eight-yard line. Boy, who, who is going to win that confrontation? Again, Lindy Washington or Melvin Pearsall? You know, a few minutes ago, he went one-on-one -on -one with Jackson, who's 185 pounds. Now, here comes Lindy Washington at 170. Boom! Well, there he is again. 255-pound Pearsall just runs him over. Makes him look like he's playing a little league game. Picks up the first down again down at the eight. 
gain of 17. And who would have thought there were rumblings here in Tallahassee about the offense and whether or not they could put points on the board. shall again, nice stop that time though by Lindy Washington. He, well, he got hit the first time and uh, Pearsall got away, but he wrapped them up on this play. This is one of these games now. If you're playing on defense, you've got to get some pride about you. you got to light your hair on fire and just hit somebody. Smash mouth football. I mean, Lindy Washington comes from a great program. The Matha High School has been well-schooled in how to play the game. Come in and try to tuck your tail and hit the guy high. If you have a size disadvantage, make the power come through your legs and hit him high above the waist. Be changing the play at the line of scrimmage on second and go. Oh, the pitch. Feaster almost lost it, and he's going nowhere. Wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Dangerous pitch from Busby. Rashid Simmons, who's getting a start at defensive end for Eric Hicks, made the stop along with Eric Barton, who was in on the quarterback. Maryland in short yardage has been pretty impressive. The bad news is they've been in short yardage a lot. <laughs> well, they had the Impressive stop on the first drive by Florida State inside the five. This guy right here, Ron Vanderlyn, is a positive thinker. He is going to make it happen at Maryland. But it's going to take a little time. Third and goal from the seven. Busby with time to the end zone. Touchdown, E.G. Green. Just like that. E.G. Green presses him hard. Now stop it right there. He says, if I'm even, I'm leaving. There's no way that Davidson can catch me. The ball is well thrown. Davidson goes up, can't get a hand near it, and Green's got the touchdown. You can't give the guy the outside leverage. That is great separation by Green. Dramatic on for the point after. And the Knolls are rolling back after this message in a word from our ABC stations. The Seminoles up 17 to nothing as we're about to start the second quarter here in Tallahassee. Terry Gannon and Tim Brandt and uh, Timmy, Ron Vander Linden's worst nightmares have come true here in the first quarter. You know, I think he expected this. He talked about losing to Ohio last year or last week, like being burnt by a match. He says, now we have to go to an incinerator. And I think he knew what was going to take place. There's a tremendous difference in the talent level between these two programs. But this guy is young, positive thinker. His philosophy is sound. He understands football. He's rebuilt programs before at both Colorado and Northwestern. He's going to win at Maryland, but it's going to take time. I think he knew this was going to happen. Well, we talked to him the other day, and I asked him about how you approach things when you're at a Colorado when they were down before he helped turn it around. And, Northwestern, and he said you have to be positive, but you have to create high expectations. And here on first down, the pass complete out to the 30-yard line near a first down. And the Terrapins may have it. But he said, you have to let your players know that you expect to win, not that you hope to win. Well, and I think all rebuilding programs go through this. We saw this last week in the Pitt Penn State game. Pittsburgh under Walt Harris is rebuilding. And I think you go through that transition where at first, you know, you hope you can win. Then you think you can win. And eventually you expect to win. And that's where he wants to get. I'm surprised Maryland's not being more aggressive defensively and they're not being more aggressive offensively. Just short of the first down, a gain of nine over the second time so far in the game on first down that the Terrapins have gained yardage. Rogers hit, spins around, and falls ahead for the first down. Sam Howard is the man who spun him around. Uh, and one thing Vander Linden has done, too, is even though he's very young this year as a team, he is playing the senior. You've got a, a Buddy Rogers, who he's starting at tailback. And you've got Brian Cummings, a 50-year senior, when some people would say, why not get the youngsters in there and, and allow them to play because you're probably not going to win right away. Sure, don't misunderstand me here. Vander Linden didn't come down to get Florida State a scrimmage. I mean, he came down trying to win this ball game. And that's why he's playing the seniors like Cummings and the rest of the guys. Right now, they're the best players on the field until the younger guys get some experience. Peter Timmons, the H-back, Buddy Rogers, the tailback, Cummings under pressure. And he goes down. At the 26, Roland Seymour, a redshirt freshman out of New Orleans. He and Tony Bryant sharing that defensive end spot. 
and he played well against the Trojans last week. You can't sit and wait because they're going to get you. And Seymour knows it. He's got a groin injury, so he's not up to full speed right now. Ryan started in front of him, but watch him come off this corner, get around to the outside. There he is on the left of your screen. All right now, Cummings pulls up and tries to set the throw, and there's Seymour. Out of New Orleans, Louisiana, and he too, just a freshman. And we had a shot of it, the secondary, and there was nowhere to throw that football. Not only is he being crushed, but there's great coverage in the secondary. Cummings throws back to Ryan the tailback out of the grass and up to the 33. He did a lot just to get back near the original line of scrimmage. Dexter Jackson, the free safety out of Quincy, Florida, on the stop. And Rodgers is down on the turf. Looks like he had the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Took a shot in the ribs. Big, strong offensive line, but to be honest, right now they're slow, much slower. So they come with the reverse screen, trying to let Florida State be an aggressive, run themselves out. All right, so now he's got one-on-one, -on -one and he tries instead to run around him, tries to put his shoulder down and go through him. He caught the helmet right in the right side of his ribs. Now, John Robinson talked about it last week when they asked him, what are your thoughts on the Seminoles? What do you think of when you say Bobby Bowden? He said, the first thing that comes to mind is speed. At every position, and probably too deep, the Seminoles are as quick or quicker than anybody in the ACC. There is absolutely no question about it. We're out of practice earlier this week, and we're watching these guys. And I mean, they're quicker than gossip. They get down, they get around, they get to what they have to do. And right now, that's, that's showing so much here against Maryland much, much quicker than the Terrapins. One thing Bobby Bowden doesn't want to happen today, because he knew it was a mismatch, is to have anybody get hurt. Of course, Buddy Rogers from Maryland can't afford to get hurt either. He's a leading ground gainer. Ryan Underwood, also a senior out of the Bronx. In fact, the fifth-year senior will come in for him right now. But uh, at least it's good to see Rogers up and standing. Well, Vander Linden was at Colorado when they turned things around there. He was a defensive coordinator at Northwestern going to the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago, back-to-back -back Big Ten championships. So he knows how to build programs. And Terry, they were very similar situations to what uh -huh. he's in now. When he went to Colorado, it was right after the Chuck Fairbanks era. And they had won one game the year before. Actually, I think they went 1-10, 1-10 back-to-back. They came in and totally rebuilt that program. Wow, look at what the Bruins are doing to Texas. Bob Toledo, uh, he needs that win, too. He's taking some heat in California. Two losses by what, a total of nine points. Tough losses the season. And uh, tough going for Cummings here as well. He's wearing the black jacket. He may need it today. Tony Bryant in initially. But a couple of Florida State players in on top of Bryant Cummings. He knows what this is like. It happened to him down in suburban Miami a year ago. Peter Warwick back deep. Sean Stunner is in the punt now for Russell Edwards. Warwick's got room. Punt back trying to get to the corner. And now it's going the wrong way. There are flags everywhere. Should have stayed down initially, I think. Uh, Bobby may have a word with Peter after this one. You have runners going back and forth like that. A lot of time blockers get caught where they're in front of a guy. As soon as the runner reverses, now you're behind the guy because he turns his back. I suspect this will be a block in the back against Florida State. It's a 36-yard punt, and Warwick lost six yards running back and forth. Ran about 50 yards to get there, but the, uh, the flag that is down... They're discussing it right now and probably where they want to mark it out from. Yeah, the block in the back. Ronald Cherry, the referee and his crew out here today. You know, the other thing Bobby is worried about today, not only injuries, but he doesn't want his guys to get sloppy. You get in a game like this and you feel like you can do so many things. You get away from technique, you start getting sloppy, and you get into bad habits. This is more flags than he wanted to see today. A block in the back on the return team, a 10 yard penalty, first down. So they'll back it up, and Florida State will start just outside the 20 yard line, 17 to nothing. The Seminoles rolling in the first half here in Tallahassee. The 
Seminoles up here in the second quarter. It's uh, been an offensive day for them so far. Melvin Pearsall, in fact, had eight catches all of last year, and he's got five in this game. He had seven, actually, in 1994 against Maryland, so he loves to see Maryland come to town. And we were told Thursday at practice that was one of the things they were going to try to do is get the ball to their tight ends a little bit more today. Use the wide guys to stretch the defense and then throw the tight end under. Here it comes again. Three wideouts. Travis Miner in that tailback now is wide open over the middle. This kid can run. Maybe just short of a first down, gain of about nine. But Miner, a freshman out of Baton Rouge, went to the same high school as Warwick Dunn. Yeah, sure did. USA Today's Player of the Year on offense, 33 touchdowns last year in high school. And we're talking to Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator for Florida State yesterday. He says, hey, I want to see what this kid can do. We want to get him in the ball game early. We want to get the ball to him. We want to see what, in fact, he can do. He can motor. All he did was average 12 yards a carry in high school. And Busby out of the shotgun again. Plenty of receivers out there. Play the first down to Pearsall. His sixth catch of the afternoon. This will be a career day for him. Still 11 minutes to go in the first half. He's got six. And if you're uh, playing on defense for Maryland right now, you got to be worn out. You spend a lot of time on the field, although you're playing against a shotgun, no huddle offense. So at least it cuts down on the time a little bit. Maryland's still giving much too much room for the receivers. They're sitting off. They're giving. I mean, if, if you look at the, the quarterbacks, they're 10, 10 yards off the receivers before the ball snapped. Miner with the catch, same spot he made his last one, still gets away across midfield. And you got to look at what he can do with the football. Gain of eight for Travis Miner. It was Henry Baker, a strong safety, a senior out of Patterson, New Jersey, who made the stop. See what Florida State's doing now, they're just dumping things. Maryland's playing so far back, they're so afraid of the long pass. But it, look at this, look at this cornerback back here. Can you see this? Look how far, look at the distance between that receiver at the top of the screen before the ball's even snapped. Second down on the inside, gives the Miner brings it inside. He's got room to the 36-yard line and flags at the end of the play. Jason Whitaker, a man who made a nice block to spring Travis Miner. And Lindy Washington, number 12, got there to knock him out of bounds. We'll see what the flags are all about. You better believe, too, if you're playing defense, you know they're going under, under. Now, if you come up and start to press them a little bit, tighten up on a corner, then they're going to go deep on you. And they got a face mask against the Terrapin. We'll see if it's 5 or 15. We'll tack that on. Five, face, five yards, face mask. On the defense, five yards, first down. Well, right now, this is like going bear hunting with a, with a stick. There's nothing he can do. He's trying different things, and it's just not working. Outmanned at this point. Outmanned, outquicked. Outscored. Busby. Throws behind Lavernius Coles. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage to Ryan Gick. The outside linebacker, they call him the Eagle. That position for Maryland. He got a piece of it. Does be playing with a little bit of a sprained ankle as well, a sprained foot. And he limits him getting outside just a bit. He's the intended receiver and a nice play in the secondary. You could see it coming. It was intended for Dugans, but they kept going under, under. Maryland tightened up pressure. They tried to go over the top. Troy Davidson, a guy who was a wide receiver a year ago. He's a sophomore out of Pittsburgh. Third leading receiver last year, now in the secondary. Boy, I tell you, he made a terrific play, too, to get up and get a hand on the ball because Dugans had cleared him and gotten behind him. A little more air under that ball. It's another touchdown for the Seminoles. Davidson had a touchdown catch a year ago against the Noah. The same area must have been a mix-up, and it was still almost completed. Peter Warwick got a hand on the ball. There is a flag down back at the line of scrimmage. But Timmy, you had two receivers going to the same area. Take your pick. E.G. Green and Peter Warwick. This will be against Florida State. Well, that's some speed there. Be holding up front, I assume. One thing that Bobby Bowden can't be pleased about are the number of penalties so far in the first half. 
you know, the coach is now wondering, should I take this penalty, try to make them punt, or can their field goal kicker make that? On the offense, that penalty is refused. They're full fifth. There you go. Six penalties so far against Bobby Bowden's club. So here come the special teams, and it is yeah, Sebastian Janikowski coming onto the field. Now, most teams would think, all right, they're going to punt or pick from there, but this guy can hit this field goal from this range. This is going to be a 50-yarder. And he, we saw him hitting 57 and 60 yards. And a 46-yarder last week against Southern California that was taken away because there were too many men on the field. Watch this, folks. This guy has a leg like you've never seen before. It is huge. For the most part, it may be left or right, but it's going to be long enough. What Tiger Woods does with the driver, this guy does with his legs. Throw to the snap. Throw the dead ball. Offside. On the defense. Uh, You're kidding. Five yards. Uh, you're kidding. Wow. Now it's a chip shot. They can almost they can almost change field goal kickers now and bring Grammatica in. Well, Grammatica kicks when it's at the 25-yard line or in. This is a wedge. 44-yard <laughs> try for Janikowski. Trouble with the hole, actually, but this one straight through the uprights. He's amazing. May have been more like a sand wedge. He's going to make a fortune in the National Football League. Freshman Sebastian Janikowski from Poland puts the Noles up on the board once again. Helium. Well, Steve Spurrier and the Florida Gators last week put 82 points on the board. I don't think that's in the mind of Bobby Bowden, but uh, it's 20 nothing already. And, Tim, you and I talked about it a week ago. We had Pittsburgh and Penn State as Maryland not even in double digits yet in terms of total yardage. But uh, now whether it's the right thing or not, scores matter in terms of the polls and how many points you put on the board. Sure they do. Here's Florida State going out last week to the L.A. Coliseum and playing Southern California, a team which is ranked 21st. They get the win, they come home and drop in the polls. Florida goes out and scores 82 points. Of course, everybody says, look how great Florida is. So, you know, this is a situation where points are worth money. The more points you score, the higher you go in the polls, the better bowl bid you get, and it means more money for the coffers. Janikowski's kickoff this one only goes about 40 yards deep in the end zone, but the Terrapins don't bring it out. Lamont Jordan, question goes to one knee. They'll come out to the 20, and uh, Florida State opponents better get used to that. This guy, well, Bowdy said he's got the strongest leg he's ever seen. That's coming off of having four years with Scott Bentley, leading scorer in school history. Ryan Cummings, only four attempts so far he hasn't had time to even get out and throw the ball yet and he's been under so much, so much pressure and again florida state puts so many guys up they challenge you to throw and maryland refuses to do it right now i'm surprised they aren't going to three-step drops quick passing patterns go to the slants get the ball out try to at least get somebody isolated one-on-one -on -one with the secondary well lamont jordan the freshman out of uh, forestville maryland in that tailback now buddy rogers injured on the last set of downs for the terrapins it's jordan across the 20 out to the 22 yard line Next Saturday, America's biggest road show rolls on. Live regional action beginning at 3.30 Eastern time. Most of you will see these same Florida State Seminoles taking on the Clemson Tigers who won today at NC State. That's another good matchup in the ACC. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station and the game's available from your cable operator. Balance in the ACC this year, maybe more than ever before. Florida State has had a lot to do with that since they've been in the league. Cummings on the run, completely through to his H-back up to the 37-yard line as Matt Kalapinski. Lamont Green, number 45, made the hit, but a nice throw on the run from Cummings. See if Maryland starts throwing a little bit more now. They got a break there because the pressure was going to come from Andre Wadsworth, the left defensive end, but he went inside, took an inside route, actually fell down, and that's the way Cummings came. And so when Cummings got around the corner, Wadsworth was on the ground. He could throw the pass without being pressured. Wadsworth is a guy, you spend time with him, and you're more impressed every time you're around him. Oh, you have to love him. He is a student athlete everybody would like to see in the NCAA. He already has his degree in basketball. 
Pediatrician Sports Administration. This one overthrown Moses Cruz, the intended receiver. First of all, when you talk about Wadsworth, you say, all right, what's the definition of dominant? Well, it's Wadsworth. I think that's synonymous. He came in here as a 215-pound walk-on, built up to 285 pounds. Then they moved him to the outside where he is now. He got down to 265. Now he's 20 pounds lighter and a lot faster. He is a guy who, as you mentioned, he has his undergrad degree. He's working on his master's right now. He spent an internship working in sports marketing. This guy can promote himself. He's going to be a number one draft pick. He won't have to, I think, uh, next year. And remember that the bookends last year, the two defensive ends, Bernard Wilson and Peter Bolwer, taking over for them. What are we going to talk about that right now? Lamont Jordan, tough going over the right side. It's back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. And Peter Bulwer, by the way, made the statement that he really thought that Andre Wadsworth would be the best of that trio. Sacks a year ago with 52 tackles. He was playing inside at that point, was Andre Wadsworth. What he's done in football, what he's done academically in the classroom, is like a script, and he's the star. And a third and long for the Terrapins. They have fared well on third and long. And they don't this time either. Cummings on the turf, on his back. Jerry Johnson, the sophomore, hit him with one hand and set him to the ground third sack of the afternoon for the Seminoles. Cummings got beaten up here last year, actually took himself out of the game near the end. Another penalty though, Timmy, against Florida State. The reason I mentioned last year is because Cummings limped off the field there, taking a lot of shots. Offside on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. We'll replay for the event. will bring up third and about five. And Bobby's going to you know, write this down. Remember to tell them about the penalties that happened. And you know he will. I think Bobby's enjoying this year very, very much. A lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen. Out of the 82 guys they took to California last week, half of them were going to their first college football game. They don't even know what time pregame meal is. Yeah, and he says he says it's it's like teaching again. It's fun. You never know what's going to happen with these guys. Ryan Underwood in that tailback now for Maryland. Throw initially out to the flat, but he hits his tight end, Mike Hall, and has a first down at the 49 of Florida State. Cummings paid the price again. But that is a great play by Brian Cummings. Here's your 5'11 senior right here, fifth year guy. He drops back, feels the pressure, continues to backpedal and throw the ball as he's backing away. Almost looked like a Dan Marino release. Watch this thing. He can feel the pressure coming inside and outside and throws as he's backing away and still makes a perfect throw to Hall 92. Mike Hall, his first catch of the year, played last week against Ohio, did not catch a pass. Look at this. I mean, he's actually falling away when he's hit. Was Brian Allen, number 55, who was right in his face when he hung in. Option coming to the near side. Jordan almost lost it, now straight ahead. And inside the 45, down to about the 44-yard line, Bobby Rhodes, number 49. Made sure he didn't go any further. Now, that's a terrific call as well. We talked about Wadsworth. That's where the pressure's coming from. Wadsworth's coming off the corner, so what they do is they take the ball right at him and option him. Now, watch this. Wadsworth is going to come off the corner right here down to the quarterback. They'll option him and get it outside. Boom, there he is. Get it outside. Try to get the corner. Good pursuit by the Florida State Seminoles, but they optioned the guy they were trying to get out of the play. And Lamont Jordan, only a question out of throws for a girl, and he's going to be a good one. At NFL type size. 5'11", about 210 pounds. Here he is again. Steve, he may go. One man to beat. They're not going to get him. To the end zone goes Lamont Jordan. 44 yards. Well, almost on cue, you talk about what a star is going to be with NFL size, and he explodes. Watch this, he gets a nice hole. You mentioned not only his size, but he's 210 pounds, but also has good speed. He's a 4-4-8 guy. Now look, once he gets into the secondary, this is what you want, isolate and run. He outruns him in the secondary and takes it all the way into the end zone. Lamont Jordan out of Suitland High School. Watched him play an all-star game this summer. He was very impressive there. Vandy said, can't wait to get him to College Park. And he's not only got the size, he's got great speed. You knew they weren't going to catch him. He ran a 10-6-100 in high school. 
Brad Rhodes on for the extra point. And it's good. So the Terrapins with a drive here in the second quarter. Jordan with a touchdown. They're on the board. 44-yard touchdown run from Lamont Jordan has put Maryland up on the board. It's 20-7, to and uh, we start talking about him. He goes right to the end zone, Timmy. How about this? This time last year, Lamont's playing over to Cleveland High School when he's playing against, you know, guys that are smaller than he is and maybe get 1,000 people in the stands. Here he is now in front of this huge crowd at Florida State, one of the best teams, one of the best programs over the last 10, 15 years, and he explodes for a touchdown. He's going to be a great player at the University of Maryland, and that's the kind of player that's going to bring this program back. Well, and he's also one of those recruits that uh, people point to. Ron Vanderlyn is making it an emphasis to get kids in the Washington, D.C., the Baltimore area, kids from home, and he's one of those guys. Uh, Tony Jackson, the defensive back, is also another guy like that. And so, you know, you take care of home, and then you go out from there. Everything is secular. I mean, in the 50s, Maryland dominated. They had their national championship teams. They were outstanding. Then in the 70s, Maryland won 21 straight ACC games. Now, Vanderlyn is trying to bring them back again. Davey Ford at the right part of your screen. Jermaine Stringer also back deep. Brad Rhodes, the kicker for Maryland. The six-yard line, Jermaine Stringer bringing it back. Still up. Now to the outside and out to the 26-yard line. Well... The reason that Lamont Jordan had an opportunity to take it 44 yards to the end zone, Buddy Rogers, on the previous set of downs, injured. Looked like he got hit in the ribs, we noted at that time, and he was down on the turf for quite some time. He got up under his own power, but then he was carted off moments ago to the locker room. He's got those ribs heavily taped. Took that helmet right on the right side of the rib cage, and that's what has it iced down. Lewis, you have anything more on that? Guys, after uh, he was carted off the field, I talked with Sally Worth, the head trainer of Maryland. She said he's going in for precautionary x-rays. We'll probably know more in a few minutes. Terry? I see if any ribs maybe are uh, broken or misplaced in there, Lewis. First down, the pass out to Ron Dugan. Now, Maryland's playing with a lot more emotion right now, Terry. Of course, the touchdown helped pick him up, put a little life back in him. But they've made two good defensive tackles in a row now on the kickoff and then on this play out here where they were isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Well, the coaches really don't want to get isolated one-on-one -on -one that open, that often with the Florida State receivers. You can't help them sometimes. Not over the middle, the deep feaster for a gain of about four. Eric Barton, the inside linebacker, made the stop. But uh, this is not a team in Maryland that is going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage with their quarterbacks. They're so young in the secondary, you can't afford to. But they were playing that zone before because of that reason, and now... You know, Florida State was just picking them apart. Now they're getting a little more aggressive. They're playing too deep. That last time they went five under, had a little man combination. And now they bring up third down and long. Shotgun again for Busby. 20 of time. Goes to the five side of the field. Peter Warwick with the catch up at the 40-yard line. And it's a first down for the Knowles. Gain of 10. Peter Warwick and E.G. Green do the fastest guys you're going to see at the wideout spot in the... Uh, Warwick, the sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida, had six catches a week ago, 50 yards. You know what's tough on this? They keep working on number 12, Lindy Green. Watch this, or Lindy Washington. Watch this. 12's late getting over there again. If they continue to do this, he's going to get a complex, and next week get off the, the bus backpedaling. Busby backpedaling himself right now. Abadu was there, takes him out, and complete. That's E.G. Green again, gain of about three on the play. Well, between Green and Warwick, you talk to some of their teammates. As you look at what UCLA is doing to Texas in Austin, 37 to nothing. That's a shocker. But uh, teammates will tell you kind of a whisper, Peter Warwick has a chance to be better than E.G. Green. He may be the best that we've had in a long time. What they tell you. Busby, 21 out of 27 now with the completion down to the 45-yard line to E.G. Green. Now, this is one of those games where even the guys that are holding the chains on the sidelines are going to get tired. I mean, they're walking up and down fast now. Is it first down after first down, but again, there's a flag on the play. Georgia up big. Miami, Arizona State. 
early on in that one. That's a good one. Syracuse Virginia Tech tonight on ESPN. Offside on the defense. The penalty is refused. First down. I'd say they're pretty good numbers so far for Buzz. 21 out of 27. And we've got 416 and counting left in the first half. This one completely off and missed. The first time we've called his name today. A redshirt freshman out of Miami. 6'1", 185 pounds is what they list him at. But we saw him in shorts the other day at practice. If he's 185 pounds, uh, I go about 220. We were talking to... Mark Rick, the uh, offensive coordinator, said he looks so fragile. He goes, yeah, but he can fly. His legs, he's got those little bird legs. Eighth different receiver that Busby has hit this afternoon. Again, from the shotgun, they've stayed with that until they've gotten to the goal line. Loads of time for Busby and some room to run. The middle of the pole. Still up down to the 15-yard line. Well, Pick your receiver, he can go to any of them. Eight different guys that he's gone through this afternoon already in the first half, and he's got players open on almost every play in the secondary team. Well, first of all, he does not have any pressure on him, so he can look at the field. Once he starts scrambling, the receivers now adjust their routes. They start skating in the same direction as he is. By that time, the defenders now don't know whether he's going to run or pass. They leave the receiver, and he's open if Busby hits it. And actually, you're right. With no pressure at all, if you have that much time, eventually, no matter who's in the secondary, you're going to get open. Busby to the Incomplete. Knocked down by Tony Jackson. Another nice play from Jackson. E.G. Green was there. That ball was thrown just a little bit behind Green. And too soft. That ball should have been picked off, almost was. Jackson, as you said, had a good break on it. Poorly thrown ball said coming in, Maryland's biggest concern was the secondary, but look, he hangs this one too much, and the safety 27 makes a break on the ball and almost has the pick. Again, it was a combination defense. They had the safeties trying to take the, split the field down the middle and take the outside half. Must be looking to go over 300 yards. He's got 283 so far here in the first half, and more green to the corner of the end zone. Another touchdown for the Seminoles. He didn't get him on the previous play. You go right back to E.G. Green for 15 yards. Sure, but instead of this time going deep, they run a guy deep and they bring Green on the quick out underneath. So the guy stretches the defense, and when they soften with the deep pattern, he comes under, makes the catch, and then runs it in. The Manica splits the uprights with the point after. Well, Maryland had some life for a moment with a touchdown, but E.G. comes back with one of his own. This week's Marriott Moment takes us back to 1994, where Bobby Bowden and Florida State trailed an ACC foe at the half for the first time in ACC play. Maryland was up 20-17, to 17. but in the second half, a different story. The Knoll defense shutting out the Terrapin offense. The Seminoles scoring 35 second-half points. They go on to the 52-20 win. Another ACC victory for the Seminoles. And, of course, Bobby Bowden has won the ACC. In the last five years, 10 straight, 10 win seasons, 10 straight years in the top four. No one has done that before. And uh, the only loss in conference play, of course, to Virginia. Everybody knew coming in that Florida State was a much more dominant team than anybody else in the Atlantic Coast Conference. It was known as a basketball conference, as you well know, having played on a national championship team at NC State. But I think what's happened is now the rest of the conference has gotten better. Certainly not to this level, but gotten better. These guys are going to have a tough time when they go to Clemson. And, of course, everybody's looking forward to the Carolina game. Well, I think you're right. I, I think in terms of recruiting, you go into a kid's house, you say, you're going to help us beat Florida State. You're going to help us get to the top in the ACC. North Carolina, a legitimate team, when you talk about a national championship picture. We'll find out more against Stanford and then, of course, uh, with Clemson and uh, with Florida State as well in terms of the Tar Heels. But NC State with a win at Syracuse. And you've got Wake Forest beating Northwestern again this year. As Janikowski, the only problem he's having is with the teeth. That's, if he can get it there, it goes through the end zone. The big question is, how will these guys respond, the young players at Florida State, over the long haul? Tough schedule. They have to go to Clemson. They play at North Carolina. They play at Florida. Mm -hmm.
everybody. Bruce James down to one knee. No way to bring that one out. And Janikowski has been that way all day long. Well, Timmy, I know you want to pay attention here. As we promo Thursdays on ABC. Nothing sacred. Cracker. All starting at 8. Kevin Anderson in Nothing Sacred. Robert Pastorelli in Cracker. That's all coming to ABC Thursday night starting September 18th. And I know you'll be there. Look forward to that. Long day for Renegade, too. About 120 down on the field. The Turtles take over. Cummings gets it to his tailback, Jordan, who has jumped at the 20-yard line, right at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Allen's had a good game. The backup middle linebacker who is in there right behind Bobby Rhodes who gets the start because Daryl Bush is out with a sprained ankle. Ryan Allen, the cousin of Bernard Wilson. Outstanding player himself. As you look at Lamont Jordan, not a good sight for Ron Vanderlyn, and he already lost Buddy Rogers, his starting tailback. And we will take a break right now, go up to New York, check in with John Saunders. John? Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, we'll have all the day's scores and highlights, including the big one, Colorado and Michigan. Yeah, starting this late in the season didn't hurt Michigan at all. Tremendous performance by their defense today. Really put a lot of pressure on John Hesler. Wolverine's got that win. We'll have that and more. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. Right now, let's take you back. Thank you, John. And uh, this is not a good sight at all for Maryland fans. They're working on the knee of Lamont Jordan. This will break your heart. I mean, here is a true freshman. We talked about him playing this time last year in high school games. He comes into Florida State and breaks off that long run for Maryland's only touchdown. And to see him get hurt, I mean, you could see the exasperation, the feeling that Ron Vanderland had when we took that shot of him on the sidelines. I mean, look at that. Five carries, 52 yards against one of the best teams in the country. 44 of those yards on the touchdown run. Take a look, see if you can pick it up. Got rolled up on right there. Got rolled up on. Allen, Allen landed on his ankle that he had to give. Walking off, but uh, walking off very gingerly. Not putting any pressure on that knee. Hmm. Well, Buddy Rogers getting looked at and uh, taking precautionary x-rays for his ribs. So that's going to leave it up to Brian Underwood and Damone Boone. And Devon freshman. Boone, a guy who uh, experienced not the injury last year, but uh, at one play the first game of the year, didn't even run the ball, and didn't play the rest of the year, and did not get a redshirt. I'll never understand that. And I don't know how the NCAA, when Ron Vandalinda came in, I know he appealed that. Never touched the ball, was only in for one play, but never played him again. Off of the year of eligibility. Matt Kalabinski, the H-back in motion. Brian Allen again. You mentioned he's playing one whale of a game. Well, this is just textbook. Slides down, reads the play, makes the hit perfectly. Gets a pancake. He likes it, too. Look at it. He's having fun. It's the way football is supposed to be played. Just watch number 55 here, coming off the right hand of your screen. Tuck your tail, get good leverage, drive him back, get some help, and see ya. Damone Boone, the man that we mentioned a moment ago, number 24, the sophomore running back out of Springfield, Virginia, now in for Ryan Underwood. And he is the long setback. Our second down. Under pressure is coming, so goes Boone. Comes back up to the 27-yard line, a nifty run, and I'm not sure how Cummings got that ball out of there. Now, I have seen Damone Boone play in high school, and he is 5'7", but has great speed and tremendous balance. One of the most heavily recruited tailbacks in the country when he came out of West Springfield High School, Springfield, Virginia. Florida State takes a timeout right now. They'd like to get more on the board after stopping Maryland here. All right, let's answer your question. How did he get it off? Well, there's Coward making the hit. Just barely gets it off. Does it with all of his wrist because the arm was tied up by Coward. Once he got it out to Boone, and Boone made positive yardage out of it. Boone had some big plays last week against Ohio, including a 21-yarder. Well, 
we've talked about how good this Florida State defense is, and it is led by Sam Coward and Andre Wadsworth. When you compare it to the defenses of the last five years that Bobby Bowden has had, there are some differences, though, and we talked to Andre Wadsworth about that. This defense it could be better than last year's defense. You know, the reason why, because I think our secondary is a little bit more experienced. And um, our, our linebacker core, I don't think we had a year yet that we had Sam Coward and Daryl Bush healthy at the same time playing in the linebacker corps. And those two guys, if you know, each year, if one's playing, one gets 100, 100 tackles or over 100 tackles and leads the team in tackles. Now, with both of them back there, I don't know if there's enough pay, plays for both of them to get 100 tackles, but... Um, it's going to be tight. It's going to be a tight season, but I think our defense could be better than last year's defense. Which is a scary thought. And you, <laughs> you go back to the days of uh, Derek Alexander, Derek Brooks, and all the pressure that they put on quarterbacks. It looks a lot like that. Boy, they hate here to say the linebacker corpse. <laughs> Russell Edwards awaiting the snap, and they blow it dead. How could you not love Andre Wadsworth? So they have been on the offense, a five-yard penalty, and still have some fans. We saw, sat and talked to Andre yesterday at great length. He just he talks about all his teammates. He's very humble about himself. And yet here's a guy that's going to be making an awful lot of money and playing on Sundays in the National Football League. And besides that, here's a guy that's almost getting his master's. He already has his undergraduate degree. Well, when I told him that Peter Bulware was quoted as saying he was going to be the best of the trio, uh, Wilson, Bulware, and Wadsworth, he said, you know, I just have a hard time thinking of myself along with those guys. I, I just don't think of that good a player. Those guys were great. But he is. Here's a fake. Edwards out incomplete. So Rob Vanderland in late here in the first half chooses to go with the fake punt. And an incomplete pass from Edwards out to Paul Jackson. Well, Bobby Bowden calling a timeout, trying to get the ball back after stopping Maryland. He's got loads of time now to try to put seven more on the board. The sad part about this is he was wide open. He makes his catch. There is not a soul anywhere out around him. He was by everybody. All he had to do was just throw the pass. So far in the game, as you look at Bobby on the sidelines, a field goal. A touchdown, a touchdown, a field goal, and a touchdown. You know, you have to. for Florida State. Terry, you've got to like that call. I mean, what's he have to lose? Now you're already down 27-7. Busby over the middle. Complete, and that's up to Fanez Gooch. First catch in the afternoon for him. A reserve tailback, redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. You're going to get smoked. What difference does it make if it's by 10 points or 100 points? I agree. Uh, and they have not shown that they could stop Florida State even if they punt the ball away. So second and five now for Buzzy. Just over a minute to go here in the first half. Complete. That's a long trip. Now that's Melvin Pearsall. The tight end. Another catch. And flags on the play again. And they come in late. This will be a personal foul against Maryland. Be a late hit on Davidson, number 20. Ooh, mm. blocking the back against Florida State, which is unusual because the flags came in late and right at the point where the ball was dead. It was an illegal block in the back by the offense. It's a 10 yard penalty, 10 second down. Number seven, Lavernius Coles coming in. Here's your block in the back. The helmet's on the back side. Mm -hmm. Eric Barton, the man who is probably going to make the tackle there. And a good call by the officials. So it backs it up to the 21-yard line. Yeah. Busby to the right side of the field. Ball dropped. And that's Peter Warwick who dropped a couple against the Trojans last week. Warwick just took his eye off of it. He was starting to run with it before he had it. Watch this. Here comes the ball. Now watch his head. See his head swivel to the right? Took his eye off the ball before he actually had it in his hands and brought it in. Here's a guy that's so dangerous when he gets it with that 4-3 speed. He was trying to locate the defensive back instead of the football. Third down, both teams goes down. 
first time that we have seen pressure back there to that extent by Sheet Simmons with the sack. And now 47 seconds left here in the first half. Good stop by the Maryland defense. Yeah, in fact, we had just mentioned after the fake punt that you almost could put six on the board that deep in their territory, but uh, it's the second time that they've made a stop. The first one was on an initial, the opening drive by Florida State. So it's Janikowski, who has already hit one this afternoon. He is one for one on the year and in his career. Janikowski is big, too. Great, big, strong guy. You know, Bobby Bowden said that uh, when he was recruiting him, he saw him, and he says, I'm, I'm going back to see if we have a kicker. I hope we haven't recruited one yet. Well, when he looked at the tape from high school, and Janikowski played in Daytona Beach, Janikowski was kicking him down on kickoffs to about the 20-yard line. And Bobby said to his assistant coaches, what if we signed here? This guy can't even get it to the 10-yard line. Well, he was squibbing him. And uh, it's the only reason, obviously, the first time you saw him kick in person, when well, he made the statement, I think this guy's got the strongest leg that I've ever seen on a college kicker. Well, he was a soccer star over at Seabreeze High School, and everybody always said he had that strong leg. So this one placed down just inside the 40-yard line. So it makes it a 49-yard field goal try for Sebastian Janikowski. And trouble with the hole. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. This guy got a leg or what? That thing was still going up when it reached the goal post. As it passed the uprights, it still was looking up. That makes the ball look like it has helium. 49-yarder, he's two for two, and if you count the one a week ago out at the Coliseum, which you can't officially, but uh, he has not missed yet. And here another snap that's a little bit low. Nice job by Marcus Outson, the holder, to get it there. Terrific job. Janikowski never even slowed up, kept his rhythm, went after it, had all the faith in him, and that's where the repetitions in practice come through. Hey, you know, if you're Outson, you may want a different job. You're taking some heat right on the head after every one he makes. From Poland, last year was the first year that he ever kicked in terms of football. As you said, Tim, he was a, a soccer player, but uh, played one year in high school, was the kicker for one year, and here he is. He actually he kicked a 60-yarder in high school and actually tried a 71-yarder. Bill Gramatica, the short-range field goal kicker. It was the point after, too, but... Uh, I wonder at what point do they get to Sebastian Janikowski exclusively. Now the touchback, they'll bring it out to the 20. Well, next Saturday, America's biggest road show rolls on. Live regional action at 3.30 Eastern time. Your list of games here on ABC. Most of you in this region will see Florida State once again take on Clemson. Should be a good one at Death Valley. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station and the games available on your local cable operator. Chief Osceola. Looking for Tim Brandt. Ryan Underwood over the left side and out to about the 23-yard line. Well, Buddy Rogers injured so far. LeVon Jordan injured. Lewis you got more on the sideline, an update on those? Yeah, really, it's a terrible a turn of events for Maryland guys. Lamar Jordan scores a touchdown while Buddy Rogers is carried off the field with bruised ribs. Now Jordan goes off with a right knee sprain. He's got his entire right leg iced. He was in a lot of pain when they put him on the cart. He is probably done for the day. Terry? Well, if they're icing it, most likely he's done for the afternoon. No question. No question. If there's ice on it, he is done, and we hope that it is just only a sprain. I'm sure we'll have an MRI done when they get back to College Park. Maryland will just watch the seconds tick off here to close out the first half. It has not been a good one for the Terrapins, but Florida State got the offense going. Ron Vanderlyn trying to find a way to stop the shotgun, the right arm of Thad Busby. The Seminoles up 30-7. to 7. 
over the Terrapins. First ACC matchup for both schools. Babylon halftime 97 comes up next. Brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know use Valvoline. Back at Doe Campbell Stadium here in Tallahassee as the Seminoles putting up 30 points in the first half. They lead the Terrapins 30-7 to in the first ACC matchup for both of these teams. And the offense, what they did was obvious, but how about the defense in the first half? Sam Coward right in the face of Brian Cummings. They don't get much better than Coward. He's been applying pressure all afternoon. Then they've been coming off the corner. They've had Wadsworth. Here we go again. Coward now sliding down. Look at number one. Gets there first, gets into the holes, and a lot of help comes. That defense runs through the football, a lot of pursuit. You know, Keith Cottrell last week, did a pretty good job. He had a 43-yard average. Dropped that first snap a little bit nervous. Today, he has not even been on the field. Florida State has not even needed him. Not one punt. The only guy who has not broken a sweat in a Seminole uniform so far. Hasn't been out there at all. You look at the statistics at this point, only 90 total yards for the Maryland Terrapins. And the bad thing for Florida State, seven penalties, 71 yards. If you're a Maryland fan and looking for something positive, Maryland has outrushed Florida State with 43 yards and the Seminoles with only eight rushing attempts in the first half as opposed to 34 attempts in the air Thad Busby with over 300 yards in the air in the first half you don't have to rub it in pointing out the facts well Ron Vanderlyn and I'm sure at halftime had a lot of positive words for his team we had talked the other day and he said sure with a young team and with a program that you're trying to turn around and he's done it he's been a part of the staff at Colorado when they turn things around, the staff at Northwestern, he was the defense coordinator up there. You do have to be a little more positive with youngsters than you would with uh, with seniors and guys who have been there before. But uh, you know, this is a this is a guy taking over a program that's had one winning season in the last six years, and he's changed everything. It takes a while for that to take hold. Yeah, you cannot do it all in one giant step. You can't come out and be crazy and run in all kinds of trick plays. I mean, there are old coaches and there are bold coaches, but there aren't any old bold coaches. You got to do it in steps, build things up, get the players, and then uh, go from there. Sanders back awaiting the second half kickoff. Kowski in this one. He doesn't even get a chance to catch this one. This sails all the way out of the end zone, and that's the way it's been all afternoon long. How about Sam this Howard, guy? Eight, eight tackles yeah. today and two for a loss, and uh, this is the guy who had 18 last week against USC. We were uh, talking last night about how excited we were to see both Wadsworth and Coward play. I don't think either one has uh, given us anything that we didn't expect. They are great players. And then if you look at this, you see that Maryland in uh, 90 total yards and 71 of those penalties against Florida State. 71 other yards because of Florida State's penalties. Ryan Underwood, the carry on first down here. The first play from scrimmage in the second half. Ahead for about three tough yards. Tate Cody. A redshirt freshman cornerback out of Blakely, Georgia, made the hit. Underwood has good size at 6'2", 197 pounds. He was at 26 yards last week in eight carries. I'm excited to see Damone Boone get in the ball game. He got it for one play earlier and had a pretty good gain out of it. Well, you'll see both of them most likely here in the second half. If you weren't with us in the first half, two of the running backs for Maryland went down with injuries. Buddy Rogers with a rib injury. They took x-rays. Don't have any word on that yet, but certainly rib bruised in the first half, and uh, Lamont Jordan with a strained knee. Pass over the middle, almost picked off. Shevin Smith had the end zone on his mind before he got the ball. That was intended for Moses Cruz, who had six catches last week, but wasn't looking for the ball. One thing about Cummings, he knows he's got to release it quickly, so the receivers better be looking in from the very first step. Now watch this. Cummings will go back. He'll take his three-step drop. Now, he's looking to throw it because he can feel the pressure. Now, look at the head of Moses Cruz. He was not even looking back until he got back by the safety. They've got to look in right away. Cruz, six catches a week ago, has not caught a ball this afternoon. Cummings hasn't had time to throw to him. This one, a quick out complete at the 22. But how about Samari Roll? 
wrapping up Harold Wesley in a hurry. Tamari Rowe, another one of those seniors that has is a time-tested veteran and has played in that corner. But one thing that's impressive to me is the adjustment that Vanderlyn made at halftime. They didn't get the first down. But remember we were saying, why didn't they go to a three-step drop and get it quickly? Well, that's what he's doing now. We've seen both passes now. It's a three-step drop and get off because there's Wadsworth coming again. You're going to get pressure every time. So you might as well go to the quick release, and they're doing that. And you figure you're going to break one of those. At least you're getting them isolated now, one-on-one -on -one with the secondary. Peter Warwick awaiting Russell Edwards' punt. High snap, and he just does get it off. And Warwick with a fair catch, drops the football, and then falls on it at the 46-yard line, but a short punt. Only a 30-yarder by Russell Edwards. Good field position for Florida State to start the second half. Busy afternoon for Thad Busby already. Over 300 yards in the air, a couple of touchdowns. He may be done at this point. He stands on the sideline, and here is the sophomore out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Dan Kendra, who is an all-everything quarterback at Central Catholic High School up there and has yet to take over. He's played behind that Busby, of course, the job could be his when Busby leaves. There's another guy, Chris Winky, who spent six years in the minor leagues playing for the Blue Jays, who will battle for that position. But the coaches wanted to get a look at Kendra. And here on first down is Marvin Minutes coming back to the near side across midfield. Eric Abagu, number 42, made the hit on Minutes. Troy Davidson of Maryland, a little bit shaky getting up. You know, the thing about Kendra, because here's one of the best high school quarterbacks ever. And he is huge at 6'2", 245 pounds as a sophomore. They call him the resident bodybuilder here. But you realize in the offseason, he was up to 270-some pounds. And they said, hey, listen, you want to play fullback or linebacker? He said, no, I want to play quarterback. And they made him get back down to the weight. And he's back down to about 240 pounds right now. So also 30 pounds and a little more than a month. There's Kendra Strong. He'll carry it for, for you. Across the 45-yard line of Maryland, close to a first down. Do you believe that? I mean, there's Delbert Calcetta, 274 pounds. Also, now you bring in the linebackers, and you got Hicks in there at 267. And still, Kendrick carries him another seven yards. Watch the leg drive. And here's a guy who has uh, leg pressed more than any other player on the Florida State team, over 1,300 pounds. Got the strongest legs, maybe maybe the strongest player on the squad. This one could have been picked off. Pearsall was out there, but so was Eric Abagu in the coverage. Well, that was nicely played, too. And there is a look at Chris Wanky, a freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, a guy who spent six years in the minor leagues with the Blue Jays on the verge really of uh, getting a shot at the major leagues, but now at the age of 25, first year player. And the coaches love him too. It'll be a battle between Kendra and Winky next year. Kendra complete over the middle and another first down. Dugan's on the catch for the 27 yard line. There has never been a question about the strength of Kendra's arm. He has just a gun hanging from his shoulder. Quality player. You know, one thing about the Florida State coaches, they told us yesterday, they want next year's quarterback to win it on the field this fall, not at spring practice. So when they bring these quarterbacks in, even though they're winning 30-7, to they're going to continue to throw. Kendra, plenty of time. Now a lot of room. And again, he can run. Turns the corner. Knocked out of bounds at the 11-yard line. A different type quarterback, too, than Thad Busby. Yeah, let the record clearly state the fans of Florida State love Kendra. He's running, he's big, he's strong, he's got a tremendous arm. He's a legend from high school days. They love this kid here. But the thing about Busby is he just wins. He's 11 and 1. He'll go to 12 and 1 today at the start. It is ironic that that Busby, a guy who has led them to an 11 and 1 record, now a 12 and 1 record if they hold on today, which it looks like they will. But Dan Kendrick just got the biggest cheer of the afternoon from the crowd. And here he goes, taking off running again. Not going to get anywhere, though. Eric Barton, the inside linebacker. Got him just as he crossed the line of scrimmage, actually right behind the line of scrimmage. Well, big crowd reaction when Kendra 
Fendra came into the game. How about down on the sidelines, Lewis? It was unbelievable, Terry. You should have seen the offensive coaches down here. They broke into cheers, fists went up in the air, laughing at how Kendra handled that defensive line. There. Amazing. Terry? Kendra to throw now. Out of the shotgun. Speaking with the catch, stays up for a moment, but down to the 12-yard line. Eric Hicks, defensive end that is uh, a little banged up. He's got a, a home bruise. Around his knee, did not start this afternoon, but he is playing. Look at the offensive coordinator, Mark Richt, up in the uh, press box. He's the one making the calls, and he's the one that wants to evaluate these quarterbacks and get them ready for next year. Kendra did play last week against Southern California, but just in short yardage and goal line situations. What a touchdown, the opening touchdown against the Trojans. Great prop. The middle of that ball was tipped. E.G. Green was in the back of the end zone. Not sure he was open though. Pretty good coverage. Be brutally honest too. It's a lot easier to come in when you're winning 30 to 7 mm -hmm. and play loose without any pressure and let the ball fly. Kendra moves him down the field, but Maryland with the stop inside the 15 yard line. And now it'll be a 31 yard field goal try for Bill Gramatica, who is uh, coming on for the first time this afternoon. This one is no good. You know, you made the point earlier that how long will it be before we see Janikowski kicking everything? And if this continues where Gramatica misses like that, it won't be long. And Gramatica actually did have a field goal early in the game, the first three points on the board. You forget about him because of all the excitement about Janikowski. And the thing is, too, with Gramatica, is he's a good kicker, and he's very accurate, and his leg is a little bit stronger than you believe. As a matter of fact, he was practicing yesterday, and he came off the field. I said, what's your range? He said, oh, I can hit a 50-55 yarder. He said, I said, well, where do, where do the coaches take you out? He said, from the ball to the 25. <laughs> Damone Boone in the ball game. Young running back straight ahead up to the 25. Now, Damone Boone played for several plays last week. He got all positive yarders. Including, including a 21-yard game. He came in earlier today, got positive yardage, two plays now. Both times he's picked up decent yardage against a very strong Florida State defense. I think you have to give this kid more repetition. You've got to let him have the ball. Well, depending on the injuries to Rodgers and Jordan, he will carry it a lot more, a lot more work. 24. There he is again over the left side get outside, but he fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. He was hit three or four times before he got there. Theon Rackley, a sophomore out of Tallahassee, with the initial hit. This kid is not big at all. As a matter of fact, he's only about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, but his legs continue to go all the time. Watch how many times he gets hit. There's a grab, there's another hit. That's two, three, four, there's five. And then finally, it takes about four or five guys to get him down. Yeah, he's not big. He made Rackley miss. He made Lamont Green miss. He lists him at 5'9". He may be about 5'7", but about 200 pounds. Swing pass out to Boone. Nice catch. Samari Roll, though, just popped him. And there's a flag back at the 33-yard line. Yeah, I think this is going to be against Pat Ward of Maryland for holding. Actually, you can take your pick. I think he held him and hit him in the back. This is going to go against Florida State again. The flag came in the secondary. Oh, it's against Maryland. Yeah. That's an illegal blow on the offense. The penalty is received. Full fail. Blocking below the weight. Uh, and they have strengthened the rule this year on the chop block and blocking below the waist. They have extended the area in which it's called. So and you may see more of those calls. And it's become a point of emphasis because they want to try to save some knee injuries. Right. <laughs> so Cummings on the sideline. Edwards to his young running back. Russell Edwards on for another punt. It's Deep Feaster that is back at his own 42-yard line. Florida State, everybody else up on the line of scrimmage. This 
is a good one. Feaster back looking into the sun at his own 30. The spin. And up to the 47-yard line. A pretty good kick, but it was a line drive punt. It allowed Feaster to bring it back 18 yards. Florida State, good field position again. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Domino's Pizza, who brings you their newest crust sensation, Pesto Crust. And Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you, fresh beer tastes better. It's a hot one for Renegade today, too. 97 degrees officially, over 115 on the field. At the time of the kickoff, and Kendra back in at quarterback. And look at this. 22, Davey falls down the sideline. Did he get there? Well, he stepped out at the 34. They bring it back. And there is an official at the 34-yard line. You're right. They beat four, number 22, a freshman out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Cardinal Newman High School, another guy who can fly. And a gain of 19, even though he didn't get to the end zone. They just keep bringing these guys out. Everybody's got great speed. Watch this. 5'11", 188 pounds. Gets the corner. Again, there's no containment. The perimeter breaks down. It's 101 in the secondary. See if, in fact, he touches the line. I don't think so. Maryland got a break there. He never did step out of bounds. And he got to the end zone, too, before Lewis Sanders got him. But the ball rests on the 34-yard line. The reverse to Lavernius Cole. Flag right at the point of attack and down to the 29-yard line. Thursday of practice, we watched them run this play. They call it 29X reverse. And they love to watch Lavernius Cole take that ball and run. Now, he starts in motion, so it almost looks like he's going to pass the quarterback. There's Ron call Dugans. up here, Yeah, and he's holding on. Number 80. Beyond the shoulders. Holding on the offense. A 10-yard penalty will still have first down. So when they run that at practice, too, they probably have more fun with that than any other play that they run. And they've had a lot of success with it, too. Bowles comes out, Damian Harrell comes in. Look at that. That's going to drive Bobby Bowden crazy. Even though they have 30 points on the board, in complete control since the very beginning of the game, all those penalties and Bobby Bowden will not be happy. And her hands off the TV board, spins back to the near side, can't get away though from the second tackler who was there, Anthony Jenkins. And the guy that chased him out initially, and then Chris Jenkins brought him down. Virginia up on Richmond. Michigan with a big win. Rubber game of the match, I guess, of the series. Went down to the last play the last two years in that contest, not this year. Penn State 52 to 10. Mike McQuarry, all the question marks about the Penn State quarterback coming into the year. All he did was throw for uh, a school record a week ago. Now they put 52 on the board. Down right away. Eric Hello, Barton. Eric Barton. Wow. Now there's a, a linebacker from Maryland that they say can be just fantastic. He's time tested. Guy has 12 straight starts. He's all conference. A lot of people believe this is going to be a big time linebacker. He's going to play in the NFL. Guy runs a 4-7. He can be great. He's got a little bit of a sprained knee, but he's playing anyway. Watch this now. He comes through, C44 under control, and then just tags him. Drops the tail, gets the leverage, brings the power through the legs. It puts Kendra, who's a hoss, down on his back. Kendra's 245. Well, Eric Barton and Kendall Ogle, they're only juniors. You watch them next year. Both of those names will be on the, the Butkus list. Right now, Ogle's already on that, but Barton, 13 tackles a week ago against Ohio. Those are going to be two good ones in their senior year. Florida State takes a timeout. What was impressive about that play by Barton is the fact that the coaches say he is going to be great, but he's a little bit undisciplined right now. He has great instincts, but they have to teach him technique. Well, there was a situation where a linebacker could have run right by a more nifty quarterback, but instead he came under control, read it, and made the tackle. And, Timmy, you were a standout player for the Terrapins many, many, many years ago. Uh, but as a college football player, 
you know, you, you have one system in place, and uh, Mark Duffner was there, and then you, you, you have a new coach take over. It's awfully difficult because this defense is a much different type defense now under Ron Vanderland, and, and they were running just as the offense was with a run and shoot at Maryland. We went through that same situation when I was there. We had a coach by the name of Roy Lester, then Jerry Claiborne came in, and he was a defense-minded coach who changed everything. But it's still getting to the football. And, and just learning techniques, being disciplined, but being aggressive. And I think that's what they're doing at Maryland now. I mean, if you if you talk to the defensive coordinator, Wally Ake, and you listen to Ron Vanderlip, and these guys want these guys to be physical. They want it to be a technique defense where you, you squeeze, you read, then you react, you beat the guy in front of you and make the play. Well, next Saturday, America's biggest roadshow rolls on. There's your lineup live at 3.30 Eastern time. Florida State taking on Clemson. Most of you will see that one. Timmy and I will be at Iowa State. Iowa and Iowa State there. But check your local listings for the game on your ABC station. And the game's available on your cable on the Seminole's a tough matchup at Death Valley. Catch up to the air. At the 16-yard line, Lindsey Washington, man for man with Lavernius Coles. Coles just went up in the air and got it. A little bit more than that. It was Washington was with him step for step and had good coverage hanging in his hip pocket. But Coles looked back. Washington never did. When Coles located the ball, Washington never saw it. Now watch this. First of all, Kendra has plenty of time. When you have that much time, you can put the ball where you think your receiver has the best chance. Coles located it before Washington did, came back and made the catch. 39-yard gain from Kendra to Coles. First down, the pitch got to Travis Minor. And he's taken down right away by Rashid Simmons, the junior out of Edison, New Jersey. Simmons, a transfer from the University of Michigan. Played for the Wolverines in 1995, had 22 tackles on the year, so he played quite a bit, and then uh, sat out a year ago. He was a great high school player. He was maybe the number one defensive end in the nation his senior year of high school. He's another one of those plays or those players, Terry, that's going to help turn his program around at Maryland. Terrapin's doing a much better defense here in the second half, and there's no question but the fact Florida State's playing a lot of people. They're going down the depth chart and putting them in the game. But Maryland stepped up and got a little more aggressive here. Loss of seven on first down. If flags on the field, this one through the hands of the intended receiver, a little bit overthrown. There's a flag bill right at the line of scrimmage. Well, they have gone in the direction of Lindsey Washington so much today, but I really like that cornerback, Washington. I mean, he's going to learn a lot from this game. He's a young player, but he's getting more aggressive as the game goes on. These, these guys will not be that much intimidated by people in the future. Mm. Goes against Maryland, no offside. See, he's still giving too much of a cushion. But watch this. He'll drive him off, now step, and now come back. All right, now Washington breaks on the ball. It's still late. He was open, but he's getting better. Yeah. And by the way, it wasn't that long ago you played at Maryland. You guys had face masks, right? I told you last week, when I was at Maryland, we played so many homecomings, we took our own floats. Made sure they noted that one on the schedule. We got to the point where... People thought those floats were our team bus. The five-yard penalty brings it up at second and 12. Just over five minutes left in the third here in Tallahassee. And Kendra, the straight drop. Flags on the play again. Straight out to Peter Ward. He's in the end zone, a touchdown. He beat Lindy Washington again, but let's hold on and see what the flags are all about. Of all sides, mm. all the defense. Uh, we want to the time for the touchdown. So the touchdown stands. Warwick in the end zone. Second and 12 pass from Dan Kendra. I hope Lindy's family knows that we're not picking on him. Florida State is again. He's playing way off to the the uh, receiver and for a guy like uh, like Warwick who's an outstanding receiver on any level he's going to beat you if you give him that much room. Well, from Attica just missed a field goal moments ago and makes up for that a little bit. The extra point is good. Busby, Kendra, doesn't matter. Florida State on a roll.
maybe some of the same fans that were criticizing the offense after last week's performance against Southern California. No such thoughts this week. Florida State 37 to 7 over Maryland. Trouble is, when you're as good as Florida State year in and year out, they raise the bar. They expect so much out of you. So you go out and you beat a good, solid ball club like Southern California, you come back and say, well, you didn't beat them by enough. Not even the pollsters thought that, though, too. They dropped from number five to number six. The Trojans, a solid team out on the West Coast. There's Lewis Sanders, the sophomore out of Staten Island, back at his own goal line. He hasn't gotten a chance to run one back this afternoon. Janikowski has kicked everything deep into the end zone or out of the end zone. This one, a line drive kick. Forget about this one, too. It's going to bounce out. Well, talked about Thad Busby's day so far, and Dan Kendra. There's another guy in the stadium who could play a little quarterback here at Florida State. He's down on the field right now with Lewis Johnson. Hello, Lewis. Thanks, Terry. That's right. Hey, good to see you down here. Talk about a Heisman Trophy winner down on the sideline. Charlie Ward, what are your thoughts on the team? you got to miss being down here, I mean, when you watch Florida State do their thing. Well, actually, I don't miss being here, but um, <laughs> I'm happy to uh, be back and blessed that I can come back, but you know, our team is looking good. Last week it was kind of shaky, but it had a lot of new guys, so they're, looking, they're doing well. How about Dan Kendra there, powering, trying to get to the end zone there? Reminds you of an old days? Well, not for me. Maybe some of <laughs> our running backs. Uh, I used to run out of bounds. Tell me about the Knicks. you got to be getting close to training camp. Your thoughts on what will happen this season for you guys? Well, I think we're going to be uh, a lot better than we were last year as far as uh, we have the same team coming back, but I think we're more mature and we're playing together, Florida State's had so many young players this year. Have you been able to help out and talk to some of these freshmen as they come out here with the pressure of having to play? Uh, actually, I don't know. <laughs> so I just have to talk to the guys that I know, but I talked to uh, my coach, Mark Rick, um, and he tries to help them out. Um, I try to help them out through him. Okay, Charlie, thanks so much. Good seeing you. Uh, thank you. All right, Lewis, great to see Charlie Ward back here speaking uh, at a local function uh, in town this weekend. What was the guy we saw Dan Kendra run to the end zone? And Charlie was being modest. Take it all the way. What a kick button, he said. Well, down again goes coming. Damone Boone on the previous run, not much success either. Dion Humphrey was in the backfield right away. You know, if Damone the the Boone does not get a lot of playing time, it'll be because of plays like he just had. He went to block and actually went to his knees and missed the guy. He's got to improve on his blocking. I think everybody at Maryland right now has got to, they, they've got a weakness they've got to improve on. Now, if you watch, here's, here's Boone in the backfield. Now, watch this. Left hand of your screen, stopping right there. Now, he's here. The guy's going over the top and he's going to get to the quarterback. He just missed him completely. And you've got to be able to take that guy down and protect your QB. It comes through to the new side. Touchback, still up. Nice run, but only up to the, to the 17 yard line. He is a talent, though. He can make things happen offensively. Every time he runs, you're expecting the possibility of him breaking it for a big one. On comes the punt team on fourth and 13. That was the seventh straight possession that Maryland. Has taken over at the 20 yard line. And Kanoski kicking everything out of the end zone. And a good afternoon so far for Dan Kendra. Coaches getting a look at him as they want to do, and they want to do it with uh, Chris Winkie, the other backup, too. Snap, Edwards handles it. Line drive on Feaster with a chance to return. Runs right into his own man and a defender. Brought back to the 37 yard line and Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern time. ABC's Monday night football. The Eagles and the Cowboys. Cowboys upset a week ago by Arizona in overtime. And the Eagles with the upset win over Green Bay. That's a good one. Monday night right here on ABC. A 37 to 7. Dan Kemper back on. Terry, it's hard enough to stop a team like Florida State, but when you have them starting every possession in your territory, I mean, it's like running downhill. You shorten the field, cut it in half. It's almost impossible to stop. Manos Gooch gets the carry this time. Inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line. He's got a first down for the Seminoles. You're right, though, Jimmy. The last three possessions, at least, 
right around midfield, and this one well inside of midfield. Now, you've heard me say that a lot about running downhill, but really, if you're playing defense, now you've got one of the fastest teams in the country, and you cut the field in half, and they only have to go half the distance, then you're really up against it. 435 total yards for the Seminoles to 96 for the Turks. Well, we said up top it was a mismatch. Gooch looking for room. Then is Gooch ahead for a few. The redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville from Ed White High School. He had three carries a year ago against Duke. Sprained an ankle and took his redshirt year. I thought it was pretty insightful. We were talking to Ron Vanderlinden yesterday, and he said, we're not trying to win a championship against Florida State on this field today, but I'm trying to build a championship team, and this will be one step. We'll learn some valuable lessons. We'll take our licks, but we'll understand what it's like to raise the bar to play on that next level. And he said, we'll get the players in here to do it. Second and eight. Gooch trying to get outside and turn the corner. Cuts back up some room. Flags on the play, but he carries it all the way down to the three-yard line. May have been a hold. It looked like Myron Jackson, the tight end, was out ahead of him and uh, using the hands illegally. And they're point in that direction, so... Uh, Whatever it is, it's against the Seminoles. And it is a hole. Now Bobby Bowden is 22nd year as the head coach at Florida State. Needs a couple of wins to reach the 200 mark. Comes in with 198 wins. And uh, Bobby right behind Joe Paterno in terms of the active win list. Unlike Joe Paterno's Penn State team, though, which we saw last week, not fancy, just efficient, tries to wear you down. Florida State will twist you. I mean, they'll turn you with reverses, powers, and the long pass. They really mix it up. They try to get you to overcommit, then they just blow by you. Lamar Glenn, the fullback, now in the backfield, along with Gooch, Kendra the throw, flushed out, still up. Throws on the run, complete, inside the 25-yard line, knocked out of bounds is Myron Jackson, and let's step up to New York and check in with John Saunders right now. John? Well, Perry, Chad Pennington once again working and going to his favorite guy, and why not? Marshall against Kett. Randy Moss hauls this one in, and then it's just a matter of can they haul him down. They're certainly not going to catch him at that point. Randy Moss having another terrific day, two touchdowns. Randy Moss also padding his stats towards the Heisman Trophy. At least he's a huge candidate in this one. Take a look at what he's done today. Terry, back to you. Randy Moss, of course, spent time here at Florida State after being at Notre Dame. And Andre Wadsworth told us yesterday that not only is Randy Moss maybe the best basketball player he's ever played with, he may be the best athlete on the football field he's ever played with. And uh, that was with apologies to Peter Warren and E.G. Green. Kendra to the end zone. The catch made by Warren. Oh, what a catch. Well, Wadsworth may want to take back that statement. A few more of those type catches. I want to tell you something. Not only was the catch spectacular, but he came down and got a foot inbounds. Use that body. Looked like another former Seminole here, like Freddie Bolitnikov. Watch this now. First of all, Kendra does a nice job of putting it where only his guy can get it. Puts a lot of air under the ball. Now watch this. He goes up high. He's being hit. Still gets his foot down inbounds and makes the touchdown. Nicely done. Great catch. 24 yards from Kendra to Warwick. Dramatica just inside the right hook, right end net. And Kendra picked up right where Tom Busby left off. He started the first play from scrimmage in the second half, and he actually gets hit here, Timmy, after he throws a perfect strike to Warwick. Yeah, there's no question, and he knew he was going to take that hit, too. He still got the pass off. He was focused in on his receiver where he had to put the ball. He knew the hit was coming by Hicks and still released it perfectly. 
not only the catch, but the concentration knowing that he had a safety inside of him, the ball over top of him, and the line behind him. And he did all three things. Made the catch. Two of the best right there side by side. E.G. Green and Peter Warwick. Green has led him the last two years in receptions. Uh, but you talk to the folks around here, they say Warwick has the potential to be even better. Only a sophomore. Competing not only against Maryland today, but maybe for a starting job next year here at Florida State. And well, he looks the part, doesn't he? He got the grass on the cheek all over his face. Bruce James back at his own goal line. to return this one and they're going to decide to bring it out to the 20 again you get used to the touchback and you just take it eight straight times that they have brought it out to the 20 early on stanford and north carolina in chapel hill well they're going down the uh the depth chart now they're trying to play as many guys as they can florida state does i see where sharon dorsey is now coming to the ball game he's six seven 315 pounds. So the Terps take over at their own 20 yard line. And they can change here in the third. Cummings gets to flying under it. Back in for the bone boon. And he's knocked out of bounds with a 40 right at the line of scrimmage. Todd Fryer was there. The backup cornerback. Bobby Bowden put a lot of players in the ball game. Now there's Dorsey. We were talking about him. 6'7", 315 pounds. They've double teamed in that time to keep him out. Of course, that'll free up a guy like Wadsworth, the 85 right next to him, who has the quicks. But, I mean, this guy is a load, and he's young. He's a freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. We'll keep an eye on him. We'll see what he does. They'll move him down on the short side. We'll see how he does over there. Takes up some space. You might want to listen to that nose guard and defensive tackle. About three yards wide. And it straight ahead to the 25-yard line. Well, you mentioned Dorsey, one of the youngsters on this team. There are 41 first-time players that they had on the travel squad at the USC. And Tommy Bowden, we talked to him about what it's like to coach such a young team. Well, fun. It's, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's fun. You, know, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what they're going to do. Look at my punter last week. He gets the game, everybody in one, and they snap the ball perfect, he drops the ball one more. He goes, I drop kick the punt, you know? And things like that occur. It makes it kind of fun and exciting. Scares you to death. Scares you to death. Cummings, speaking of scared to death, at Wadsworth. this point, he's got to be running away. Andre Wadsworth. In there all day long. Yeah, we said at the top of the telecast, he's good for a couple of sacks every game. Fourth sack overall for the Seminoles. He's been involved in a couple of them. And even when he doesn't get the sack, a lot of times he'll be the reason that somebody else gets one because he'll chase them out. So the end of the third quarter, Florida State putting points on the board. We're back after this word and a message from our ABC station. Back in Tallahassee, fourth quarter about to open up for the state opening up the offense all afternoon. 44-7 over the Maryland Terrapins. Sean Stoner into punt now deep in his own territory. Don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, we will select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team to date. Chevrolet has awarded over six and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Maryland's been having slow snaps. Now, they have a return on not a block, but they've still been getting good penetration on the Maryland punts. Connor gets it off, though. Pretty good punt. Feaster all the way back to his own 33. Fights his way back to the 43-yard line to a return of about 10 yards. 51-yard kick from Sterner that time. Average starting field position for Florida State the second half has to be at the 45 or midfield. I mean, they have been up there.
starting every drive. And there's a young man who's had a good afternoon. He came out, he started the first play of the second half after Thad Busby threw for over 300 yards in the first half. You see the numbers on Kendra also had a long run, got sacked, but uh, now his replacement comes in. Chris Wanky on, spent six years with the Blue Jays organization and our first look at him, his first year on campus here at Tallahassee. He's going to pass on first down. Throws incomplete. Davy Ford, the intended receiver. Now, coaches love Winky. Guy is, as you mentioned, 25 years of age. He's mature, strong arm, great presence on the field. 3.5 student. And this guy has it all. He, too, is a storybook type All American kid. Here's Mark Rick, who really likes Winky. Actually, spent like four days on campus here in Tallahassee back in 90 when he signed with the Seminoles. But Mark Rick told us. Uh, Obviously, the maturity there is there, but uh, so is the talent <laughs> at the age of 25. He's got the strong, strong arm. Davey Ford trying to turn the corner. Somebody had an arm on him. Got him with one hand. I think it was Jason Brown, the defensive end, number 58. Brought him down. Now, the one thing about Winky, and the coaches understand this, and the fans have to be patient as well, is he's still knocking the rust off. As you mentioned, he's had the pro baseball career. He was in the Blue Jays organization. Finally came back and said, hey, look, I... I talked to Peyton Manning, he talked about college football, and he says, uh, all right, I'm going to come back and give this a shot, and he has, but it's been a while, so he's still trying to get that rust off. Mikey on third and five, play action, plenty of time, throws out. His receiver, Jermaine Stringer, came back. He was double covered, almost made the catch anyway. Tony Jackson and Lindy Washington were all over him. He never really was open here again. He's working in the zone. He gets into the secondary and it was Washington now playing inside out, but he's got to look back. He's got to locate the ball. The ball's under thrown. He's got to make a break on that the same time the receiver does. So three and out on the first Tony Jackson. The first punt of the afternoon for Keith Cottrell. Jackson back in his own 10 yard line. Control punt. Third catch at the 14 by Jackson. So a punt of 38 yards by Control on his first effort though of the afternoon. Maryland takes over. So the Heels will have to come from behind at home against the Cardinals. And here in Tallahassee, it's been hot. So have the Seminoles. That must be over 300 yards in the air in the first half alone. Dan Kendrick came on to play well. And uh, then it was Chris Winky who came on in the last series. Now Maryland takes over the first time in the last nine drives. It's not at the 20 yard line. Inside the 20 this time. Damone Boone, the freshman, bounces outside across the 30. And a good run out to the 35 yard line. We said it looked like he was going to break a big one, but I think he pulled a hamstring. If you watched him when he got up around the 27-yard line, he let up. He pulled a hamstring, so there's a third running back that gets hurt. Now watch this. This guy has all the talent in the world. I think he can be a big-time runner at Maryland when given the opportunity. But watch him now as he starts to stride out and try to beat him to the corner. Look at him pull up right there. Mm -hmm. See? Now he's got a hamstring problem, so he's going to leave the ball game. They're down to one running back right now. And that on the first, first down of the second half for the Terrapins. Ryan Underwood is replacement, trying the right side, wrapped up by Lamont Green, a junior out of Miami, after a game of about three. I say he's got a hamstring problem. That's normally what it is there, but with the heat today, it could be just a cramp. It could be in his calf. You know what was surprising to watch the Southern California game a week ago and see all the cramps on the part of the Florida State players out in L.A. when. You know, the, the Seminoles practice for three weeks right here in the heat of Florida and all the humidity here. A number of guys are now with cramps last week at the Coliseum. Coming for right into the face of the defender, David Warren. Boy, the play action, he turned around and Warren was right there. Now there is another true freshman, David Warren. USA Today's defense.
Defensive Player of the Year. We already told you about their offensive player. Here's the Defensive Player of the Year, David Warren, a true president. He's 6'5", 240. So when we talk about this being a young team, it is. But it also is one of the most talented teams in the entire country. Freshman out of Tyler, Texas, same high school as Earl Campbell. Yeah, see, their recruiting class, the freshman class, was rated tops in America by the people who follow those things. So if you think, well, Florida State's not as good as they have been over the last 10 years, Look out for the next three. Cummings, Corey Simon was there before Cummings could even get to his tailback. Well, don't forget, if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. John Saunders and Todd Wagner from the studio in New York. Corey Simon was supposed to have a sprained right ankle. I'm not sure Brian Cummings would buy that one. No, he's another young one. He's a sophomore. He beast her back deep at his own 30-yard line. Russell Edwards, another punt. This one, another good one. His last one was 51 yards. He sent Feaster back to his own 15. Got a lane mill to the outside and some moves. To the 44 of Maryland. A 55 yard punt. But Deep Easter brought it back 41 yards into Maryland territory. It's time to call Uncle. Florida State in a rout against ACC foe Maryland. As you may have expected, the Terrapins is very young. First year head coach Ron Vanderlyn is taking over. And you and I have talked to you. He'll get it done, but it's going to take a while. Chris Mikey incomplete over the middle. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. All right, Terry, time for the Burger King play of the day. And this one, Tavian Banks against Tulsa. Remember, Tulsa beat them last year. He made him pay. 71 yards on this touchdown run. That's the first of his four touchdowns on the day. How about these numbers for this week and over two weeks? 314 yards today, a school record. 517 yards and six touchdowns in two weeks. Maybe we should push the team. Timmy and I will be covering the Iowa Iowa State game next week. Get a look at him. He can run. I'm excited to see him. But he has four touchdowns today and a couple hundred, 300 yards. This has just been a good old-fashioned whooping here. 43 still to play, and it's 44 to seven. 16 of the 19 freshmen recruited by Florida State have been in the game. We told you it was the number one recruiting class in the country. You had the offensive and defensive players of the year. Bobby Bowden to give them all some minutes here against Maryland. Wanky to throw. The quick out, Stringer with the catch near a first down, maybe just short of a first down, though. Lindy Washington again on the coverage, but the timing pattern that time from Winky to Jermaine Stringer, he's on target. And the crowd gets restless here on fourth and one. They want Bobby Bowden to go ahead and go for it. And this crowd won't back off. They want more. Well, they know what the, the Gators put on the board a week ago. They got upset when they punted a little while ago. They wanted to, Janikowski to try a 70-yard field goal. So on fourth and one, Bobby Bowden's going to go for it. Mickey, the lead out duel, bounces off a of one man. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage, may have gotten ahead on the forward progress. He got it on the second effort. He's up to the 35, which will give him the first down. What are your thoughts about fourth and one and uh, going for it with a 44 to seven? No, I, I personally, I don't like it. I'm not one of these guys that believes, you know, I don't think there's any such thing as running the score up, but you also have to show some courtesy to the other team. I mean, if you do it first, second, or third down, you continue to move the chains. I don't mind throwing the ball if that's what your passing game is and that's what your game plan is. But going on fourth and one, there was no need for it. William McCray, number 36, now in for Abdullah at the fullbacks. Rob Manez Gooch right behind him. Play action, Wanky up top to Cole. In and out of his hands. He was double covered, but that ball was catchable. You know what? I'll tell you this, he took a heck of a lick too when he got down there. Jackson did. Jackson laid it on him. 
and he deserved it. You're going to throw the ball? Then go ahead and tag him. Now watch Jackson, 27, come on and make him pay the price. Coles goes up. Here comes the hit. Boom. I love that, boy. Ball may have been tipped a little bit, too, by Lindy Washington before he got there. Maryland hadn't gotten many licks on him today, but that was one. And if they're going to throw like that late, then they deserve it. Now, taking out some frustrations after the fourth and one call, too, perhaps. Winky to throw. Got his man. It's Minnis, number 13, at the 26-yard line of the Terrapins. Well, tonight on ABC, the 77th annual Miss America pageant, live from Atlantic City. And uh, Timmy, listen up. This year, two-piece swimsuits are allowed in the competition. All for one musical guest tonight when Miss America is crowned on ABC. Keep an eye on Miss Hawaii in the bathing suit competition. Yeah? Got an early tip on that or what? They've already had it. They did that the other night. They had the preliminaries. <laughs> Third and a long one. Davy Ford. Oh, that's a tough yard if he did get it. I'm not sure he did get it. Ryan Gick, the outside linebacker, met him right behind the line of scrimmage. And he's about a yard and a half short, actually. Been a quiet 70,000 plus. Here comes, Elvis Campbell. Here comes another one of those fourth and short situations. Yeah, they're going to think about it. They'll take a timeout, and Winky will go to the, the sidelines. We'll take a timeout, too. Be back. See what they do on fourth and about a yard and a half. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. The Home Depot, America's home improvement coach, and Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Big Mouth Burgers. A little too much sun for this guy, what Dennis Rodman does in the offseason. Fourth and one, Winky on the roll is going to get the first down. But barely, I'll tell you what. All Jackson wrapped him up, almost brought him back. But you know what, Terry? I don't mind Florida State going for it on fourth and one and a half down here because this is sure field goal range. So instead of taking three points, they go ahead and they run the ball. They get the first down. They melt the clock a little bit more. Last time, however, they went for fourth and one. It would have been a 53-yard field goal had they tried it, but probably they could have punted there and given it back to Maryland. So Bobby goes for fourth and one a couple times in a row. Look at what the Bruins have done to Texas, 52 to three. Caping down with five touchdown passes this afternoon. I'd say they uh, they broke out of it. Good production, huh? Goes for 500 yards. Winky under pressure. Flag on the play. Throws off balance. Nobody there. He just threw it away. But there's got to be a hold in the backfield. Yeah, it looked like Moon got caught. 54. Double no house said was chasing Wenke towards the sidelines and uh, being held as he did. Well, this is an offensive line, and now that the second stringers are in. Holding, hold the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty. Yeah, so 10 yards, they move it back, see if he can pick it up. Watch 54 right in the middle of your screen. Stop it right there. Here's your hold right there. He's got his arm on his back. Now watch this. Let it roll. And he almost tackles him. Kind of just shoves him down and pushes him with the hand on the back. <laughs> if you do that, you don't want to do it right in front of the official about two yards away. So it's still first down, but now first in a whole lot. At 28. 10 penalties against Florida State for 109 yards, so if there's a downside of this win, that's what Bobby Bowden can use to really get after the team this week. Winky out of the shotgun now, across the middle, over to his intended receiver, and that's picked off by Tony Jackson. And there's a flag down now after the interception. Jackson brings it back to the 39-yard line, but that was just a poor throw by Winky. Looking like Ron Dukins was down there and open over the middle of the 
field, but he just threw it about 10 feet too high. This is a situation where finally playing soft pays off. Look, he's back there just playing center field. The ball's just thrown right to him. He's looking back into the sun and says, oh, look at this. I've got an INT. Give me the pitch. Runs it back and says, okay, that's enough. I'm going down right here at the 39. Wakey does show a little bit of rust, but you can tell he's a talent. First turnover of the game for either team. And uh, this early in the season with two very young teams. That's pretty well, an illegal block. Now the return team, half the distance, first down. I'll tell you today, if Maryland didn't have bad luck, they wouldn't have any luck at all. Even when something goes well, they get a turnover, they uh, have something badly happen. That, you know, that's the way it is when you're on the road. Uh, Ron Vanderlinden was realistic coming into this one. I mean, he wanted to get everything he could out of this, but uh, you know, coaches know what they're in for when they go on the road. And Mistroli, number 14, now in a quarterback for Vanderlyn. I said this last week with Pittsburgh. It takes time to recover from reconstructed surgery. And that's what the Maryland program had. You have to limp before you run. Underwood, the carry is pounded to the turf as it's low. The rebuilding process has begun, and right now, they're taking some lumps. There's Mistroli, number 14. A couple of starts last year. First redshirt freshman to start for Maryland. Broke a collarbone, though, against Duke. And actually still has seven screws in his collarbone holding that together. He's a good-looking player, though, Kent Mastroli. He's 6'4". He's a sophomore, 230 pounds. He's right here from Florida, a Fort Lauderdale product. He, too, was heavily recruited. He's got a lot of talent. Tripped up right as he got the football behind the line of scrimmage. And now it's really his load to carry because he had the early injury to Buddy Rogers, the rib injury. He had Lamont Jordan going down with a knee and then Damone Boone either with a hamstring or cramps on the sideline. You know who's at the game here at Florida State today is Tom Nugent, former coach here at Florida State, also coached at the University of Maryland. Mm -hmm. was one of those guys that I used to watch the Tom Nugent coaches show. just getting hit every time he carries it. Boy. Took one step and right into the arms of a Florida State defender. And this, this is a tough time in the ball game for Maryland because uh, you know you're, you're still trying to work on things, take something positive out of the game, but uh, you're up against it because uh, Florida State's just keying off on every play from scrimmage. Maryland won the toss. That's the last thing positive that happened to him in the first half. After that, it was Katie bar the door. Starner back to punt in his own end zone, and they whistle it dead. Well, they will take a timeout. Ron Vanderlyn and to talk things over on the sideline. We'll take it as well. 5.31 left. Sun beginning to set here in Tallahassee. Lights have been on since about halftime. Terry Gannon, Tim Brent, Lewis Johnson with you here on ABC. John Stoner back to punt after the timeout. He stands about five yards deep in his own end zone. Peter Warwick at the 49 of Maryland. Good snap. Snaps have been slow. Got it all. This one is short punt though. The last two have been over 50 yards, and it takes a Florida State bounce back to the 36-yard line. Well, there's a young man who is a trainer at Florida State named Daniel Huffman, who is awfully impressive. His grandmother was dying, needed a kidney transplant, and he actually gave his up to save her life. He accepted a Home Depot College Football Award at Disney World at a dinner, and Bobby Bowden was there. These are some of the words that Bobby was so impressed with. I'd like to say that this is the greatest reward that I've ever received in my life, but that wouldn't be entirely true because the greatest reward is seeing my grandmother alive and healthy today and able to be here tonight. 
and thought he about and actually offered the young man a scholarship. He is now here as a trainer. Willis Johnson has more down in the field. Hey, Terry, he is a super guy. I talked to him before the game today, and he was not only excited about this being the first home game, but also something else. Today is the first time in three years that Daniel's grandmother, Shirley Allison, was able to travel to Dayton, Ohio, to see her brother. I also asked him about all the hype. He's been getting a lot of print. He's been all over television about this story. He said if it encourages people to sign their donor cards or to give up kidneys or other organs that are needed, it's all worth it. He's a great guy. Terry? All right, Lewis, thank you. Yeah, we had a word with him yesterday, and uh, well, he's so now an inspiration to a lot of the guys because they look over and see what he has done. Uh, but also, he's just thrilled to be here, to be a part of this program. What a tremendous story, a kid who has an opportunity to play football on the high school level and then take it to the next level. He was good enough to play college football, and instead of that, he sat out, gave his kidney to his, his grandma, and of course, that's what you talk about, having your priorities straight. Now, Bobby Bowden said he, he goes to all of these dinners around the country, and he makes speeches, and he talks. He said he was just floored by what Daniel had done, and his words that night, and he said, my gosh, here's a kid from high school age. It's one thing for someone very old to give up a kidney, but uh, giving up his kidney for his grandmother. Jermaine Stringer on the catch, and uh, the Seminoles just continue to move up and down the field. Chris Winkie in there came on in the third quarter for Dan Kendra, who had come on right after the half, but Thad Busby. You weren't with us, Busby threw for over 300 yards in the first half. And if you're Maryland, the clock just is not moving fast enough. This, this game seems like it's lasted an eternity for the Terrapins. Still 4.04 to go, and it's 44 to seven. William McCray now in at fullback along with Venice Gooch, the tailback. And it's Gooch looking for room, not going to find any. Kendall Ogle brought him down. Erica Bagu made the initial hit. Let's check in with John Saunders one more time. John? Well, Terry, it continues to be a struggle for Bob Davey and his crew of the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. A loss last week to Georgia Tech at home. Today on the road against Purdue, Ron Paul has popped this one up. Roosevelt Coleman with the hit. Adrian Beasley, 43 yards for the touchdown. And Purdue now just minutes away from knocking off the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Purdue lost last week to Purdue. So this is a big surprise. Notre Dame just minutes away from going down, and Purdue is deep in their territory once again. North Carolina has just added a touchdown. Davenport with the pass at 7-7, tied up with Stanford. Back to you. So the Irish barely escape against Georgia Tech at home, and now they're in trouble late against Purdue. And Bob Davey will feel that pressure in a hurry in South Bend, Indiana. I think he probably already does against uh, Georgia Tech. The production not real impressive. Erica Bagu, defensive end, the rush end for uh, Maryland. Good Injured player, too. Walking off the field. All ACC. Not a bad basketball player, either. No, as a matter of fact, I think he used to play with Mark Loomis. Our producer, I think uh, Loomis, has told us, at least. He used to post him up down low quite a bit. Well, Bagu had 10 tackles last week. He's an active hunt you down, help you up type of solid defender. If you can believe anything that Loomis says. That's there's William McCray with a catch inside the 10 down to the 7-yard line. Good-looking freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, Bowles High School. A lot of people compare him to Edgar Bennett. Who they think of when they watch this guy play. Over 100 yards a game last year as a senior in high school. Once they get it out in the corner now, all the white jerseys have to get to the football. Something Maryland has not done is run to the football as well as they could have to have any success. I really believe Maryland has to have 11 guys playing this one. They all have to have great pursuit. they got to play the wild men and get to the football. Making on the run, throws out to the fullback. McCray into the end zone, a touchdown. Why not spread it around? So McCray out of the backfield this time, and Kendra had a touchdown, Busby, and uh, now Winky. Busby had a, a pair before the half, in fact. The thing that stands out with Florida State is how patient this football team is. No matter what personnel they put into the game, they're patient, they set things up. And this play right here, they kept going to the right, they used a run, they go deep, and all of a sudden they set up this little flare out of the backfield into the flats touchdown. And Gramatica pulls this one wide to the right. And you, well, you wonder what goes through his mind with the pressure right behind him. Sebastian Danikowski, the long field goal kicker, 
You may see number 38 more often. That's the uh, second time that Dramatica has missed a short one. And you're right, when it comes time, in a tight fit situation against a club that can play with Florida State, and the title is on the line, or here in the national championship line, you know, Bobby Bowden's going to have to make a decision down there if the ball's on the 30-yard line with two seconds left to kick a field goal. And right now, it looks like it's going to be the big guy. In the fourth quarter, Arizona State... Well, what do you think the coaches uh, are thinking at this point? We talked about it earlier. Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, wanted to get a look at both Dan Kendra and Chris Wenke in this game. What have they learned? Well, you learn that Kendra's a talent. You do that going in. He's a guy that you can put in the ball game right now and expect him to produce if something does, in fact, happen to Busby. But at the same time, you know, Wenke can play this game too, but he really shows his rust. He's underthrowing guys. He's not in rhythm. He's having a tough time right now getting into that sink that Kendra has. But again, it's early in the season, and this is what Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, wants to do. He wants one of those guys to step up and win the job over the course of the season, rather than doing it in spring football. Chris James back deep, awaiting the kick. As you look at Chris Wanky, and it's a similar situation with the backup tailbacks too at Florida State. You look at Davey Ford and Van Esch Gooch and Travis Miner. They'd like one of those guys to break out of the pack, too. There it goes again. Out of the end zone. Yep. Just another kick for Danikowski. Look at Bob Toledo's UCLA, 59 to three, a game at Texas in Austin. Except for the squib kick, which opened up the ball game. Actually, well, their first kickoff, Florida State. Danikowski has kicked everything deep enough into the end zone or out of the end zone, so that Maryland has not been able to return it. Of course, that Miami game that you just saw on the screen with them trailing Arizona State got a huge round of applause here. <laughs> as, as, did, Campbell State as did the Notre Dame score. In the Swilly, back in at quarterback, number 14. The sophomore on the play action. Had a man initially, and now doesn't have any time. He's dropped back at the seven-yard line. Boy, he had Moses Cruz open initially, deep. Got to pull the trigger. Got to pull the trigger. You've got to throw it away before you take the sack. With number 48, Ryan Malone, a redshirt freshman out of Frisco City, Alabama, who brought him down eventually just outside the five-yard line. Maryland's learned some tough lessons today, but 50-7 with 226 left. Put him on the bus, Gus. Time to head back to College Park. The bus has been up and running since the half, to be quite honest. Second and 23, Mastroli rolls in the end zone and out of it. Can't get upfield though, run out of bounds right about the 10 yard line. And the Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game from Maryland, Eric Barton, 12 tackles on the afternoon and a sack. And Thad Busby only played in the first half. He was 26 out of 34 for 308 yards and a pair of touchdowns. He's been wearing that baseball cap the entire second half. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. A couple of good players there. Martin did play a solid game for Maryland, mm -hmm. but it could have easily gone to the punter, Scott uh, Russell Edwards, as well. He had a strong afternoon. Swing pass out to Underwood. Cuts back, has some room now. Cuts up. Needed one block to spring him, he didn't get it. But a good run up to about the 16 yard line. More of a power runner, Brian Underwood, than they have Buddy Rogers. Although Rogers goes about 230, certainly has the size. When the telecast began, you mentioned that there were a lot of questions being asked about how good this Florida State team is. What is your assessment now after watching them this afternoon? My assessment is that they are much better than their critics thought they were last week, most of those here in Tallahassee, but that I'm not sure that you uh, find answers to all your questions when you win 50-7. to 7. I'm not sure they were tested this afternoon. Edwards with his punt to Peter Warwick and a fair catch at the 42. So a punt of 41 yards. And no return. How about you? 
Well, it was definitely a mismatch, and it's hard to grade and evaluate in a situation like this where it's almost a track meet. But at the same time, Bobby Bowden got a lot accomplished. He played almost every one of his freshmen that came in here, and everybody in the country will agree that this was the best freshman class, best recruiting class in the nation, including the offensive and defensive players of the year. He got all of those guys into the ball game. He had an opportunity to see all three of his quarterbacks. He got all of his running backs going, and defensively they accomplished a lot. So, yeah, I think uh, I think they got everything done they wanted to, and I think Florida State is a talented team that will have a big say in who eventually wants to come. And they fake the reverse, they do throw him down to the 35-yard line. That same play that they gave to Lavernius Cole, this time Ford fakes the reverse. Red White, number 50, made the tackle. But a gain of 22 for Davey Ford. I think you're right, though. I, I think, you know, you go on the road against Southern California at the Coliseum. They're number 21 in the country, and you win. I don't care what the score is. You've got to be pleased with that, and Bobby was, but there were so many people who... Who, who doubted whether or not this team had the offense it did in the past. And you can still ask questions about it, but I think another thing it did, it got Thad Busby back in sync, and he's confident now. He, he was criticized for not being able to throw the long pass last week. Well, he was able to do that today. One other thought, too, as we uh, bring this game to a conclusion is the fact that for the last decade, Florida State has won 10 games, at least 10 games every single season. Whether they get that this year or not, I'm not sure because they do have a tough schedule. They have to go at Clemson, at North Carolina, at Florida. Today, they put an exclamation point on their talent. One of the toughest schedules non-conference-wise around. So Florida State moves to 2-0 and on the season. Ron Vanderlinden and Maryland 0-2. A tough afternoon here in Tallahassee. The offense put up 50 points for Florida State and the final. Florida State 50, Maryland 7. Don't forget Monday Night Football, the Eagles and the Cowboys for Tim Brand and Lewis Johnson. I'm Terry Gannon. Hope you enjoy it. So long from Tallahassee.